Palermo is absent. Roe, vaguely. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please rise for the pledge and remarks by Councilmember Melton. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the East Wall of Legislative Chambers. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Omaha City Council. We appreciate having you here today, and look forward to hearing from you on our many items. I would encourage you to turn your cell phones off, or at least to turn them to vibrate. And before we get started here today, we have uh, a presentation, and then one point of privilege. Uh, and we'll start with the presentation by Councilmember Bakley honoring La Casa Pizzeria. Thanks, Mr. President. If I can have uh, uh, Joel Hahn and Nicole, uh, Jesse and Brandon Hahn, and Anthony Vacanti and Tony Vacanti Jr. come to the front here. I'm already out in you, so sorry about that. <laughs> right by the microphone is fine, I think. Yeah, right behind there. Don't cross that line. <laughs> Unless you brought some pizza. <laughs> Whereas 70 years ago in 1953, Joe and Nettie Patani purchased a house on the corner of 45th Street and Leavenworth Street, and Joe, who was a carpenter by trade, renovated it into a small restaurant establishment approximately appropriately named La Casa and featured Joe, Nettie, and their three daughters using family recipes to create Napolitan style pizza, salad dressings, and signature sauces. Whereas La Casa is one of Omaha's original pizzerias and the first to feature Romano cheese, thank you for that, on its signature thin crust Romano cheese pizza with ground beef before expanding the menu to include sandwiches, calzones, pastas, lasagnas and desserts all made with the fresh, freshest local ingredients sourced straight from the community. And whereas Pepe, the beloved squat <laughs> troubadour, I had to <laughs> practice that one, with handlebar mustache and mandolone who was installed in 1957 as a signal to diners and a prominent advertisement for the restaurant was designed an Omaha landmark in 2003. The food truck was introduced in 2014 and the La Casa signature specialties throughout the city. And the restaurant was featured in Alexander Payne's downsizing in 2017. Whereas La Casa continues to invest in the community through charitable donations to nonprofit organization, organizations such as United Way of the Midlands and Omaha Food Bank for the Heartland contribute to local school fundraisers, and have been recognized for their commitment to best practices resulting in their retention of long-standing staff. Now therefore, be it resolved that the City of Omaha officially designates June 8, 2023, La Cotza Pizzeria Day in Omaha, Nebraska. In witness whereof, we have set our hands and caused the official seal of this city to be affixed on this sixth day of June, 2023. I think I'm 
Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Begley, and I appreciate um, the effort on the council to do this. And as a family, we're very proud of our heritage and what we've been able to accomplish. And I'm sure if you asked Joe and Nellie Patani um, if they thought that the restaurant would still be here 70 years later, I'm pretty sure they would have said no. But we are glad that we have been able to keep the tradition. Omaha has been a great support, good community, and uh, we, we feel very privileged to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming down today, and thanks for giving them a big hand for a great pizza. And thank you for the wonderful T-shirt you gave me as well. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Bagley. Uh, next, we'll have Councilman, Council Member Johnson, uh, who wanted to note the passage of one of our distinguished, distinguished citizens. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, for those of you who may not know, uh, we lost John Cecil recently. And I just wanted to share uh, just a few remarks about uh, this gentleman, John Cecil, a boy that started from humble beginnings in Omaha, Nebraska. To paint you a point of reference, John grew up in North Omaha, in the North Omaha Projects, a community where st statistically speaking, John's outcomes as a black man could have been a part of the judicial system and or threat to society. But not this boy, not this man. Beasley set out on a course to beat the odds and later became a huge giant in the entertainment world. Today, we honor the man, the giant, the accomplished sportsman, a husband for more than 50 years, a father, and an icon to the Omaha community. So at this time, if we would acknowledge him by doing a moment of silence, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Item six, to consider a Class C liquor license for Bomb Taco, located at 12321 West Maple Road. Public hearing and vote on number six is today. We have the applicant by Zoom. Uh, he's not on Zoom. Is there applicant here today by chance? We do typically require the applicant to either appear or be on Zoom. Do we have time on this application? Yes. All right, I might suggest we lay this over. Yes. Yes. Motion a second to lay over for one week. One week. Roll call. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe, yes. Begley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Item seven to consider a Class C liquor license for True American Bar and Spirits located at 3710 Leavenworth Street. Public hearing and vote on number seven is today. Proponents, please. Hello. It's kind of scary, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing fine. Thank you for co your consideration. Uh, as a person that's grown up in Omaha my whole life, Just I've your been. Your name and address for the record. I'm sorry. Your, your name and address. For oh, the I'm sorry. <laughs> my name's uh, Robert Young. I live at uh, 19007 Lillian Street here in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I've lived in Omaha basically my whole life. Uh, I've worked in the restaurant industry for the last 20 plus years and um, currently the beverage uh, director for Pitch Pizzeria, all four locations, including two of them in Arizona. Uh, and um, I decided to go out on my own. And uh, it kind of fell into my lap. Uh, Matt Plachik, uh, who owns the building, is a sculptor here in Omaha. He does the stuff for the zoo and children's hospitals and things like that. And uh, my a uh, real estate agent called me up and said, I think I have a good opportunity. And we went and looked at the space. And it seemed to be right in line with uh, what I needed and what I wanted. And and I love the Leavenworth Corridor. My Some of my favorite eateries and bars are on that uh, street. And I figured, 
why not? So I pulled the trigger, we signed the lease, and, and uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, it's called True American Bar and Spirits. Uh, the simple fact is it's going to be a throwback to the American neighborhood bar, uh, a place where everyone can come and feel comfortable. I kind of describe it as if you took a time machine back to 1973 and you're sitting in uh, your cool uncle's basement listening to Led Zeppelin for the first time. <laughs> so uh, that's the idea behind it. That's what I want to do. I want to provide jobs. Um, I want to hone my skills as a business owner here in Omaha. Uh, like I said, I'm dedicated to, to Omaha. I'm never moving away. This is my home. Live and die. So there you are. Great. Thanks. I have the visual in my head now, a cool basement with the cool uncle. <laughs> yeah, swag, chairs, and everything. <laughs> Only 50 more years, and you can be like La Casa, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hopefully. Right. Crossing my fingers, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Mr. Bagley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Robert, good afternoon. Today. Good afternoon. We had a nice chat last Friday on the phone. Um, and you did a good job of covering all your base. I just want to make sure we don't miss anything here. Okay. <laughs> so you're working the ref when you say Led Zeppelin in the basement in 73 because Pete's a drummer. So oh, nice. that's a good avenue to the president of the council. <laughs> um, and you also, when we talked, you said you work at Pitch. You've been up there for nine years? Yeah, just about nine years. This will be my ninth year yeah, there. Yeah, and that's, I think that's, um, you got a lot of experience in the industry. And I know 3710 Leavenworth is a historic building transitioning from the old Marley Bone, which it was for years, and they would, a lot of people remember they painted the big shamrock in the street on St. Patrick's Day, and I, I've observed that building driving through it on Lemoore Street on a daily basis, and the investments that are being put into that building, I certainly noticed them. And your commitment to the neighborhood with, we got the Conrad Apartments, the Cosgrove going in, a lot of great things going on from the mill coffee shop just to the east of you down there and everything in between from what they're doing on the south side of Leavenworth um, and your connection to this industry. So if you could talk briefly about the food trucks on the east side of the your establishment, tell us what that's going to be. Yeah, so uh, at first we were going to have food within the place, like full kitchen and, and whatnot, and we decided that as me and my wife are funding everything ourselves, basically. We decided we're just gonna have a bar and then s s small little eats and stuff within the bar. But then we talked to Matt, our, uh, our landlord, and he suggested that we pave that, that side there and why don't we let food trucks come in and uh, provide them a space during the summer months, obviously, in the winter, it's gonna get kind of cold out there. So, uh, to, and utilize that as as somewhat of a, a kitchen uh, for our space as well. Um, multiple food trucks here in Omaha, which I have dined at, you know, are always seeking space uh, to be able to provide food for people, especially in the late hours of the night. You know, a bar is synonymous with eating, obviously. So that's what our plan is for that for that space um, during the summer months, at least, and then obviously for parking and things like that during the winter months for our tenants. And, and, and when you and I talked and you mentioned those are local food trucks, so that's good for local yep. businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I, I appreciated talking to you and sorry I didn't get to catch you before council. We got caught over from our Board of Equalization meeting that ran late. So yeah, no worries. I'll look forward to seeing y'all. I'll, I'll make it down there this summer. And um, I wish you nothing but the best and I'll be glad to make a motion on this license today. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. President. There's a motion to approve second. and a second. Roll call. Hardy. Yes. Johnson. He's absent for this vote. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Thanks. Thank you guys. Item eight to consider a class I liquor license for New Gold Mountain located at seven, 6750 Mercy Road, Suite 102B, A's communication from the planning department regarding permits for the outdoor area. Public hearing and vote on number eight is today. Proponents, please. Do we have a proponent on number eight? Oh, here we go. Come on down. Hi, how are you? Hi. My name is Gu Mei I'm from New Gold Mountains. 
And yeah. your address? Uh, the address is 6750 Mesh Road, Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, Great. Thank you. And just here to answer questions, right? Yes. Okay. Any other proponents today? See none. Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Motion and a second to approve. Roll call. Harding. I'm sorry, uh, subject to permits, is that correct? Yes. On this? Contingent upon permits. Is, yep. is that your motion, Mr. Bagley? Yes, subject to permits only. And, and same second? Yes. yes. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson is absent. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item 9 to consider a Class D liquor license for Russell Speeders Car Wash located at 11212 Right Circle. Public hearing on number 9 is today. And the vote is well. I think we have the applicant by Zoom. Mr. Moore. I think, we're on, I think you're on mute there. Do you want to? We'll try it one more time here in a minute. Okay, try that. Hmm. <laughs> I think that's our fault. Just give us one second here. All right. Hello. Oh, hello. Yeah. yeah, that's great. We can we can hear you oh, now. Name, name and address, please. Hey, uh, Chris Moore, one six two eight zero California Street, Omaha. Uh, I have been the region. I'm sorry, the uh, general manager of this location for seventeen years. I believe our our previous uh, liquor license, uh, I believe, was about six to eight years old. We've got a little convenience store connected to our car wash, and we sell Phillips sixty six gasoline. Uh, we sell only the small, minimal amount of, uh, of beer and liquor just to be considered a convenience store. Uh, it was something that we didn't have, but it certainly helps um, draw more business into the convenience side of things and sells more gas and things along those lines. Um, we've had zero violations in all the time that, that uh, I've been with the company, and uh, I am the regional president for the moment here, and we continue to uh, plan to be a, a safe contributing member to the neighborhood and uh, be respectful of all the laws and responsibilities of having a liquor license. Great, thank you. Any other proponents that want to speak today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Motion to approve in a second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Thank you. Item 10, to consider a liquor license addition application for SIPs on 10th, located at 1022 South 10th Street, to add an outdoor area. Public hearing and vote on number 10 is today. We have the applicant by Zoom as well. Jacqueline? All right, try that. Good afternoon, Jacqueline Oltman's 541 South 52nd Street. Um, yeah, we're just adding an addition to our current um, liquor license, SIPs on 10th. We've been open just over three months now um, everything seems to be going really well we're excited to take advantage of the nice weather um, and open our outdoor deck so i'm happy to answer any questions great thank you any other proponents that want to speak today seeing none any opponents public hearings close mr bagley you're recognized thanks mr president and jacqueline good afternoon can you hear me Yep. So you've been open for how long has it been three months three months okay and so this is a north side i know as i drive around the district i certainly recognize the work you guys have put into that and i'm hoping yeah. that with the world series coming up you get a lot of traffic coming across the 10th street bridge as they go down to cashios or olson's bake shop to get some donuts in the morning so i wish you nothing but the best and i'll look forward to making a motion to support this today thanks mr president and thank you thank you no for the lights. Is there a motion? Motion and a second. 
Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bigley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Council members, I'm informed that we do now have the applicant from number six uh, by Zoom and who is available to entertain that item. I might suggest we take it back up uh, if you're so willing, and that would require a motion and a second, and then uh, a roll call. Motion and a second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. So now we'll have the public hearing and vote on number six. We'll get the applicants off mute here in a minute. Okay, Juan, I think we have you. Um, give that a try. Yes. How's it going? My name is Juan Magaña. Um, Bomb Echo on West Maple. Great. I'm here to answer questions. You get some. All right. <laughs> a little bit of spot reception there. Okay, that's better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else okay. you'd like to add? Or but just I'm so sorry. Gotcha. Anything no, else you'd like um, to add or just answer uh, questions? We've been in business for a few for a few years. I'm at, just answer questions. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Any other proponents that want to speak today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Motion and a second to approve. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Thank you. Item Thank 11. Thank you so much. Item 11, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat for Deer Creek, replat 27, located at 12903 Deer Creek Drive and 13014 Scott Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing and vote on number 11 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. My name is Denny Whitfield. I reside at 2915 Sheridan Road in Bellevue. I am the applicant and the professional land surveyor representing the Lindhorsts. Great. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Motion and a second. Roll call. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Item 12, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat for Sanintans located northwest of Skyline Drive and Old Center Road. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing and vote on number 12 is today. Proponents, please. Brett Schald, 14503 Grover Street, Foley Schald Engineering on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is a project that'll be two phases, a west half uh, that has two lots and an east half uh, that'll be done potentially down the road, um, all single family homes. Um, we're agreeable to all staff comments and uh, I'm here to answer any questions that you all may have. Great, thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Second. Motion a second. Roll call. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion Aye. passed six to zero. Aye. Item 13, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat for Hagen Hills, located northeast of 168th Street and Military Road. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing and vote on number 13 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, Martin Pelster, Croker Huck Law Firm, 2120 South 72nd Street, Suite Number 1200, Omaha, Nebraska. On behalf of the applicant, also I have with me Kyle Vole with ENA Consulting Group, the engineers for the district. Uh, we are presenting today the uh, Phase One of Hagen Hills, located at 168th and uh, roughly just north of 168th and Military. I'll show you a flat map. The west. The west side is in the uh, Omaha uh, jurisdiction, and this side is 40. We have 46 lots, uh, roughly 80 foot wide R4. Um, I think we're proposing R4 uh, zoning. Uh, on the east side, this is uh, in the Bennington jurisdiction. I think there's there's 43 lots and a couple out lots there. In the middle here, uh, the property is owned by the NRD uh, already. So um, the the, the backwater from the dam that's to, going to be located to the north 
uh, we'll split the, the phases. Uh, we're proceeding with phase one on the Omaha side because um, I'll show you the aerial map here. Um, this is 168th Street running north and south. Military runs diagonal here. Uh, Rainwood Road will be extended to the east along this subdivision. Uh, so we're, we're pr proposing to have phase one be the Omaha side over here because we have uh, access on Rainwood Road where the development or the development of that street is a little further along. So, uh, so we're proceeding with that uh, at the intersection of 168th and Rainwood. Uh, we have reviewed the comments, staff comments, where they're all acceptable. Uh, we, d we have, there are a few comments that refer specifically to the NRD and we have worked through those comments with the NRD and, uh, and resolved those issues with the NRD. Uh, happy to answer any other questions. Great, thank you. Any other proponents that want to speak today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Motion and a second, roll call. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton. Row, Bagley, Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Items 14 and 15 can be considered together for Omaha Works Industrial Park, Replat 16, located northwest of 120th and I Streets. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 14, a resolution to approve the final plat. Item 15, a resolution to approve the subdivision agreement. Public hearing and vote on items 14 and 15 are today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon, Councilman. Um, my, my name is Dan Doles. Over there, Hart Griffin Associates, 3552 Farnham Street. Um, really, I'm just here for questions, but I, I would like to acknowledge the help of the Planning and Public Works Department on this job. We turned a piece of ground that was virtually worthless, got a viable taxing uh, uh, tax asset to the community, uh, and it took a lot of work and coordination with the, the department. So I just want to publicly acknowledge that and thank them. Great. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Motion and a second, roll call. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Thank yes. You. Motion passed six to zero. Item 16, an ordinance to rezone property located at 1469 South 16th Street from GC District to R7 District. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing and vote on number 16 is today. Proponents, please. See none. Any opponents? Rebecca Barrientos Patlin, uh, 3305 E Street. I know this is not in my district, in District 4, but, um, you know, Councilman Begley, um, this is your district. I stand today pro bono publico simply because for the good of the public, um, when I read all the information about this um, home, there is a church right in back of it to the east of, um, to the east of the alley. There is the OHA towers that have um, elderly and um, vulnerable adults that live in there. Um, and then there's a lot of uh, single-family dwelling homes. Uh, Castellar Academy usually <coughs> holds about 70, or I'm sorry, 700 uh, children there. I was a security guard there back in the day, and uh, a lot of them kids walk home. Now, my fear for this, if this, um, if this goes from a, um, to, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, if this goes from a general com uh, commercial district to a multi-family residential district is the next step would be um, for a transitional home to possibly come in there and that kind of sets a lot of fear in for me because then kids walk home every day. We don't know what kind of transitional uh, people will be in that home if this is so. Um, I would ask that you reconsider and um, I've been noticing also that there's a lot of other homes that are popping up in South Omaha and North Omaha for transitional living in which I know it's needed, um, but I, in comparable to other cities, there is a, um, they have placed a, a traditional district in for such a place as this for those that need to come out. I work with um, 
I work with uh, parolees, and um, and so I know that there is a huge need for that. Um, I volunteer in uh, different NCYF. I volunteer and talk to people in uh, in Nebraska State Prison, and so I know that there is a need for this. And so a transitional district would be ultimately the best thing for the city of Omaha to even look at that. Uh, simply because there's a lot of fear in neighborhoods that are popping up and people are calling and talking. I got a lot of family and friends that live around, um, you know, the area of this home. So I think um, if you would reconsider and uh, not not change your rezoning here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents today? Seeing on public hearings closed. A motion and a second. No further lights. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Item 17, an ordinance to rezone property located at 5125 South 24th Street from GI District to NBD District. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. <laughs> Public hearing on vote on number 17 is today. Proponents, please. Hello. Uh, my name is Alejandra Lopez. I'm representing the owner at 5124 South 24th Street. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Any other proponents that want to speak today? Sorry again, Rebecca Barrientos Patlin, uh, 3305 E Street. I think it's wonderful what you're doing, and I'm <coughs> totally for it. Anything that would bring more. Um, workers more revenue into south omaha i think it's a great thing thank you thank you any other proponents seeing none any opponents public hearings closed motion a second alejandra just make me a question for you i think what we're doing here is a rezoning to yes. uh, a vacant building that allows it to be uh, for entertainment i yes. was interested in hearing more about what you intend to do there um, yeah, so we are doing, um, we're thinking of doing a commercial kitchen as well, too. And also, we're trying to do two big um, entertainment salons, one small and one bigger for, like, uh, patties, weddings, and things like that. Mm -hmm. We're also in the process of also adding something on the rooftop, like a roof, um, like a roof bar. So that's where we have big plans for that location. And because it's not within zone, but the business, business district zone, so that's the reason, too, that we are. Um, hopefully get in the approval tonight. Mm -hmm. Pretty much right next to Taki area Tijuana, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be a great addition to the business district. Yes. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. There's a motion or a second. No further lights. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Item 18, an ordinance to amend the boundaries of the MCC overlay district to incorporate into that district the properties located at 4110 and 4102 South 13th Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing and vote on number 18 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. Ralph Gladback, architect, 1708 Childs Road East, Bellevue. And I'm here as a representative for the owner and to hear it asking or answer any questions. Thank you. Any other proponents that want to speak today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Motion or second to approve. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion Thank passed you. six to zero. Items 19 and 20 can be considered together for property located at 11607 and 11655 M Circle. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 19, an ordinance to rezone this property from R7 District and CC District to CC District. Item 20, an ordinance to amend the boundaries of the MCC Overlay District to incorporate this property into that district. The public hearing and vote on number 19 and 20 are today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Motion a second. No further lights. Roll call. Harding. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley, Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Items 21 and 22 can be considered together for property located at 4810 Polk Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend denial. 
Item 21, an ordinance to rezone this property from R535 district to R6 district. Item 22, a resolution to approve a special use permit to allow transitional living in an R6 district. Public hearing and vote on numbers 21 and 22 are today. Just for the, for the council members' uh, knowledge, it would require five council members to approve these items today since they come with a negative recommendation from the planning department. I'll call for proponents, please. Uh, my name is Tessa Dominguez. My address is 1224 North 26th Street in Lincoln, Nebraska, um, 68503. <clears throat> and um, first of all, I would just like to thank you all, um, each and every one of you, for taking your time and consideration on this matter. Um, I appreciate you taking the time previously to hear part of my own personal journey and the story of our organization, the Mental Health Association, and the way that they've supported someone like me to both grow personally and professionally. By sharing um, your valuable time, each of you have made us feel welcomed into this community. And for that, we're grateful. Um, for this matter to move forward, like you said, I do understand that this would require five supporting votes and that may not happen today. However, I do remain hopeful. I wanna thank each and every one of you for allowing myself, MHA, and our community supporters the opportunity to advocate and educate around the work that we do in the communities that we serve. Our aim is to work together with all stakeholders, that's including but not limited to neighbors and policymakers in an effort to build safer communities. We do this by becoming a contributing member of our communities and our neighborhoods as, as we've done so in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, MHA peers show individuals firsthand the life that they could have for themselves and their families in safe and drug-free neighborhoods. We are showing people how to value themselves and their community and when I first came to MHA, I didn't even know what a neighborhood association was. I thought that was just something that you saw on TV and or maybe in gated communities and they told you when to mow your yard and how to mow your yard and what you could plant. Um, but it is through um, the work that I do with the organization that I've been able to gain um, knowledge in these things and then been able to share that with the people that we work with. We are... Um, Sorry. Um, so I didn't understand the importance of these types of associations. I didn't understand the importance of my own voice, my right to vote, or how to become a true contributing member of a community. But I have been educated and brought along in this area. And through MHA and other programs like ours doing the valuable work of supporting the transitioning population from our criminal legal systems. Today I'm an active parent, grandparent, and homeowner. And because of the work I've been involved in and the lived experience that I have now, I understand um, how, in, how inclusion and opportunity um, has played a huge role in myself, no, in myself no longer being a detriment to the communities that I'm a part of. So I know that um, you are all well informed on this request, so I'm not going to bore you with the details that you already have. Um, I just would like to point out that we are not asking for a huge leap in rezoning. We are simply asking that a, pro that a property that sits in the middle of a cluster of R5, R6, and R7 be rezoned from R5 to R6 to allow us to move from small group living to, trans to transitional living. This change would allow us to support those on parole supervision in addition to individuals we are um, that we are currently zoned for, that being those um, that have completed their number, so people that have jammed out of prison or that are on that post-supervised release. Um, so this rezoning would allow us to accept parolees in addition to those two, to those two populations. Um, we have heard from several people, why not just find another house? And I'll tell you why. Um, this property sits on the edge of a quiet neighborhood out of the way that places um, out of the way of places avoided by most people that are new in their recovery, yet close enough to business districts to find work and to be able to get um, to their appointments. It's still small enough to feel like a home to provide spaces for us to develop relationships with the individuals that would be living in this home, yet large enough for people to um, be allowed to have the dignity of personal space. Um, it does come with a large kitchen and a large dining room in case we did choose to, for. Um, for those cases where we do choose to create or have meals together, um, cook and serve meals with each other. It's close to a park, and I know that that scares some people, but for us, 
that provides an opportunity for families trying to reunify with their children, a space to go with their children just as I once was. A lot of times the people that come to live with us, they don't have the means of transportation. And so a park being that close would allow them to be able to have that space without worrying about how they're going to get somewhere else to provide that space. Um, so this property, come, it also comes with three handicap accessible bedrooms and, and a handicap accessible bathroom complete with a walk-in shower and rails. There's a huge deficit in the supply and demand of beds for individuals transitioning out of prison, but there's an even greater need for more handicap accessible spaces. This is an ideal location for our mission, and I am humbly asking for you to continue to support us in this mission. Thank you. Other proponents? So good afternoon, council members. My name is Casey Parker, and I'm at 3211 South 81st Street in Lincoln. I'm the executive director of the Mental Health Association, better known as MHA. MHA was awarded a grant from the Nebraska Department of Corrections to open a transitional living home in Omaha for returning um, people, returning citizens from state corrections. Since 2009, MHA has operated Lincoln's Kia House. Kia House is a four bedroom home located in the Indian Village Neighborhood Association, which we have been a member of since we opened. We have developed an excellent relationship with them. We participated in neighborhood garage sales, um, uh, just all the neighborhood things and, and handing out their newsletters and those types of events, which again, the people in our houses that come to us have never had the opportunity to give back and they're learning how to be a part of the neighborhood. In 2015, we opened up MHA's Hanu home, which uh, started out as a five bedroom home located in the Union College neighborhood where we also have been a member of since we opened. In 2018, we were offered a 20 bed facility located in the same neighborhood um, to rent. This Hanu home is located just north of the Lexington Assisted Living. Before opening, we had several conversations with all of our neighbors, included the assisted, including the assisted living. We gave them tours of our house, introduced them to the staff, provided them with all our contact information. Not only have they welcomed us into their neighborhood, but they are also a huge support of us and the people that we serve in our houses. The Lexington Assisted Living has partnered with us in doing several events, especially during COVID. Um, we were able to do pumpkin carving contests with the folks who were residing in our place with the elderly population who were really struggling because they were not, they were very isolated because of COVID and nobody was going anywhere. And then for the 4th of July, these elderly folks and our folks were also still very isolated. But the Lexington Assisted Living purchased fireworks and our folks in our house lit them off for the elderly population. So coming into the neighborhood with them first afraid of us being there because we do serve population coming out of reentry, we are now very connected with them to the point that when they leave our house, the Lexington Assisted Living will um, donate bedding, furniture, or any items that might be helpful to get their household started. So the stigma has been broke on both sides. I understand that Omaha has a master plan and our project is not in accordance with this plan, but I can't tell you how important it is for these types of home to be in safe communities that support growth and recovery. Giving opportunities for people to see what life in recovery is, looks like is key. I grew up in a low income housing and witnessed things that no child should see. And I never believed I would be living the life I am today. People can't move forward in recovery if they don't know what it looks like and we have to be able to show them. Last year, my mom died from the effects of Alzheimer's, but before she became really sick, I moved her into the Lexington assisted living. She would wander over and visit with our residents and they were very kind to her and I never feared that they were gonna hurt her or that those people would be harmful to her. More than 90% of the people incarcerated are returning to our community. We must be willing to see them as people and who can change and recover and provide opportunities for true inclusion, including housing that is safe, affordable, and in healthy communities. Thank you for your time, I really appreciate it. Thank you, and sorry for your recent loss. Thank you. Yeah. Other proponents that want to speak today?
Good afternoon, City Council members. My name is Jasmine Harris. I'm representing Rice today, 3555 Farnham Street, Suite 222. I'm the Director of Public Policy and Advocacy at Rise. We are the largest nonprofit organization in Nebraska focused solely on habilitative and reentry support for people who are coming out of incarceration. We operate out of seven of the 10 correctional facilities. I'm here today to uh, share our support for MHA's uh, request to put a transitional housing on um, Polk Street there on 48th. As we are working with people coming out of incarceration, our organization starts working with folks about 12 to 18 months before they hit their earliest release date. And support and planning are two of the biggest things that we truly believe in when it comes to our reentry team and how we help folks uh, transition. We have about 175 graduates of our program that have successfully uh, reentered back into communities and we continue to work with them to support their um, efforts and activities to make sure they're being successful along the way. One of the biggest issues that we run into is trying to find housing for individuals. There are so many barriers put in place when trying to find housing that includes the person's conviction, geographical sanctions, and availability. We've collaborated with MHA over the years and um, they are a trusted organization in the Lincoln community with an established record of excellence in care. They partner with their law enforcement agencies when it comes to mental health crisis response and ensuring the safety of not only their participants, but the neighborhoods in which they um, have living facilities. We cannot think of a better organization to start a facility in Omaha of this magnitude um, with the track record of success that they have. As I was reading the planning board summary of testimony and recommendations in regards to MHA's requests, I couldn't help but focus on the special information and analysis sections. A lot of the language used talks about small group living use versus transitional living, intensity rating, and the Omaha Master Plan. But I wanna draw attention to some of the words in those sections, specifically the development proposal and the land use and planning sections. In the development proposal section, last paragraph, it talks about the applicant's proposal to serve people with mental illness and or substance use disorders, leaving state facilities who are not on supervision as well as those who are only on probation, which would fall under the small group living disabled use type and is permitted. It then goes to say they may also serve those who are on parole as well. In the land use and planning sections under special use permit, there is a definition of transitional living. It is defined as a facility licensed or approved by the state or other agency which provides for the care in short or long-term overnight occupancy of more than three unrelated persons of any of whom require supervision while under a program alternative to imprisonment. The section further goes on to say the key difference between the proposed transitional living use type and the existing small group living use is the residents may be under parole supervision. I point this out to say people on probation are allowed under the current zoning. People with mental health and substance use disorders are allowed under the current zoning. And these two things are considered the key difference. I beg to differ. Probation is a program that is an alternative to imprisonment. People are under probation supervision by the Nebraska Judicial Branch. People who are on parole had a sentence requirement to be imprisoned. They're then therefore under the supervision of the parole board. But the makeup of people who MHA serve, regardless of being on probation or parole, do not differ significantly. Our criminal justice system, especially Douglas County Jail, is the number one mental health provider in the state. Denying an organization the ability to use the existing zoning because of one word, which then denies a request for new zoning, isn't the solution to one of the biggest issues facing our state. The work that I do at the state level just saw the passage of LB50, which is the Nebraska Justice Reinvestment Initiative. These policies focus on parole and access to support and reentry. We need our cities and towns to also understand they have a role in this as well. What is Omaha's role? Increasing access to quality, affordable, and safe housing for all, including people reentering communities after incarceration. Housing is one of the most basic needs that must be met to secure safety. Here is one way where we can ensure at least eight people are getting that. One of the goals of the Omaha Housing Affordability Action Plan is to increase the types of housing to meet current and future needs. One of the strategies is to revise Omaha zoning ordinance. I would encourage the planning department to take a real hard look at this zoning ordinance to not hinder access to housing for some of our most vulnerable community members. We see far too many people coming out of incarceration relegated to homelessness 
because there are not enough transitional houses, they don't qualify for public housing, and private landlords don't rent to them. Also, concentrating all the transitional living units in areas that are already impoverished help no one. Let's begin to include these types of housing in our ideas of mixed income housing and mixed use development. So I encourage you to vote for MHA's request, whether it is permitting it under the already existing zoning or the new request. I can try to answer any questions for you, and I thank you. Thank you. Other proponents today? Uh, my name is Connie Usher. My address is 2118 South 43rd Street here in Omaha. Um, I've never done this before. I'm really nervous. I'm yeah, just going to put it out it. there. Uh, I mean, so I'm just going to tell a little bit about my story. When I was about 9 or 10, I remember experiencing some mental health issues. Um, and because of the stigma, my family was never going to admit that I suffered from mental health. Um, I just knew, you know, I was different than some of my peers, uh, you know, and because I was suffering from mental health symptoms that were never addressed, people were afraid to talk about it. Um, this was the beginning of self-medicating. If I'm being 100% honest, this was the start of me relying on substances. I was a kid that was always being suspended from school and even asked to not return to church that my mother forced me to go to. Thinking that I would be able, to, that she would be able to change my behaviors. It never addressed the real needs that were there. Um, so I didn't go back to church. I was suspended from school. Um, when I decided at the age of 32 that I was tired of living the way I was living, um, after multiple suicide attempts because I thought that that was the answer to my problems. Um, I went to treatment short term. Within a few days, I was back on the streets using. It's not what I wanted, but that's what was you know presented to me at the time. That's how I was getting my needs met. That's how I was self-medicating to avoid that feeling of not being you know included and not being part of. Uh, Every time I try to stop using the substances on my own, I just kept returning back and forth to, you know, psych wards after psych wards, um, not understanding what needed to change at the time. Um, I ended up going back to treatment. I went to long term. I stayed there for 11 months. No job, no income, no housing when I was released. Um, I knew it was in my best interest to relocate from Omaha at the time to Lincoln, away from you know, the playmates in playgrounds, right? I wanted something better. Um, and when I got to Lincoln, you know, I thought everything was gonna be better and everything was gonna be changed and I was gonna have presented with all these new opportunities. But again, I didn't know what I was looking for. Um, I ended up at the city, People City Mission. I was there for about six months. And not being able to afford my meds because, you know, I was living on a very restricted income my mental health just continued to deteriorate. Um, I have been fired from psychiatrists because I was a threat to their license, is what I was told. Um, my psychiatrist that fired me, she gave me a brochure. And I kept looking at this brochure, and it was about the Kia house, location, phone number, their services that they could provide for me. Um, I called that number many, many times before I actually took them up on their offer to come and tour the house. And I remember I pulled up in this neighborhood, again, not familiar with Lincoln, and I thought I was at the wrong house. It was just a normal house and a normal neighborhood. So it made it that much easier for me to get out of my car and walk up to that door. Uh, and I spent a lot of time in that house trying to figure out who I was and where I wanted to go. And the staff and other peers in that house were my example to what I wanted. So they were my role models of how to get there. And had it, had it been, you know, any other way, I don't know that I'd be here today to talk about this. Um, you know, substance abuse was 
my back door, right? That's what I went to. And I hear people say now that we don't want to promote, we don't want to pass this because we don't want people like me in your backyard. Guess what? I've been in somebody's backyard multiple times and I stand here today proving and that the, the support of MHA is why I'm here. And I mean, if you have any questions, I'm really willing to answer them, but that's, I mean, I'm here to support whatever transition, you know, these folks, these people need a positive and a safe neighborhood to grow up in because they're growing up. They've been in this institution for so long. Their doors are opening to a whole new, you know, world to them. And if we put them in neighborhoods that are unsafe, what do they, what do they have? It's easy to go back because that's what they know. So we're here to try and show them a better way, put them in safe, affordable neighborhoods, allowing them to be part of. So Thank that's really all I have for you guys today. Thank you. I appreciate you guys listening. Um, and I would hope to, that you would consider, you know, what we're trying to do here. Thanks for being here. Other proponents today? Name and address stuff, sir? Yes. Uh, Donnie Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation. I was listening to the young lady. I think since we're one vote short, Mr. Benny could vote when he get back, and he might need this place as well. So we might want to delay, as this lady said. Mr. I like Mr. Benny, but he might want to vote for this building. Any other proponents today that want to speak? Good afternoon. My name is Rhonda Mattingly, 3107 South 6th Street, Lincoln, Nebraska. I am the executive director for Bridges to Hope. We're a nonprofit organization that works with men and women who have been previously incarcerated. And I have been working with Casey and her team at Hanu House and Kia House for over eight years. And we provide tangible items, but the people that we work with struggle to find housing on a regular basis. And so when they're looking for some place, we contact the Kia House and the Hanu House. And many times they're full. We look for other transitional housing, but many times those people that go to the other houses, we oftentimes find that they recidivate because of the unhealthy situations, because they haven't gotten any oversight whatsoever. We know when they go to the Hanu house and Kia house, they're safe, there's oversight. They have done their due diligence to get all the permits needed to provide that safety and ensure that that peer support that they're given is providing them the success path that they need to continue on. Um, Casey and her team are paving the way when it comes to transitional housing. They are being invited nationwide to speak and to train other facilities, other areas in how to do it the right way. And so when they're looking to open up another house here, I implore you to support them in what they're doing because they are leading the way and they are doing it the correct way. Their priority is the people that they serve and to see the success. And the way they do that is by listening to the needs of those they serve. And they also abide by every permit, every law, every um, requirement that they need to meet. They are out there searching out the best way possible to ensure the safety of the neighbors, the safety of the residents, and the safety of those that they work with. So please consider supporting what they are trying to do. Thank, Thank you. you. Other proponents, and can I get a show of hands who else intends to speak as a proponent today, just so we know? All right, uh, two more it looks like, go ahead. Scott Carlson, 19501 Blondo Parkway, Elkhorn. <clears throat> I'm a licensed mental health professional in Nebraska. I have been um, doing corrections reentry work for the past 10 years. I have contracts with Nebraska parole and probation across the state, um, and I'm currently serving those contracts uh, in my private practice. I'm also the founder and director of the Master Trauma Foundation here in Omaha. Uh, 
I've known Casey for the last four years um, a, a, as a person and a professional. Um, I serve on Sheriff Hansen's Behavioral Task Force, and uh, I have a letter from him. Honorable members of Omaha City Council, as Sheriff of Douglas County, I'm a strong advocate of smart reentry policies, carefully balanced with public safety. Recently, I had the opportunity to travel to Lincoln to meet with Director of Mental Health Association, Casey Parker, and her team. I completed an on-site assessment of their transitional living facilities in Lincoln, located in a residential area. I also had an opportunity to meet with Lincoln Police Department, Captain Mike Woolman, who is familiar with MHA organization and the transitional living facility. Captain Woolman reports no significant or ongoing police incidents. Captain Woolman is an advocate for their program and they also partner with uh, MHA. I also spoke with neighbors, many of whom were elderly. They too reported the MHA as a good neighbor. I'm extremely impressed with MHA and their peer-driven staff. I'm hopeful that Omaha City Government can find a way to assimilate this unique and successful model in our er Omaha area community. We need MHA in Omaha, and I totally agree with that. Thank you. Thank you. Other proponents, please. Hello, my name is Destiny Humuso, uh, 1645 N Street, Lincoln, Nebraska. I am the CARES Program Coordinator for MHA, and I'm here today to express my strong support for the Mental Health Association of Nebraska's Greenhouse to be rezoned as a transitional living so we can continue to serve those returning or wanting to return to the Omaha community. I've assisted in the development and implementation and overall supervision of both the Kia House and the Hanu Home. We have served thousands of Nebraskans and a good majority are from Omaha, Nebraska. But they transitioned to Hanu and Lincoln. One, because of bed space, you know, um, funding, all of that. They get settled and adjusted just to be uprooted again at the end of their transitional housing stay because they're coming back to Omaha. It would be so much more beneficial to help them reintegrate and get settled into the community they want to live in. We have been asked for many years to expand our services into Omaha. We offer supported employment, outreach, wellness groups, trauma groups, AA, NA, in-house, and multiple staff every shift, very well-trained peer staff. And we operate two 24-7 warm lines for anyone to call for support. Our approach to operating our services has been successful for the past 15 years in Lincoln with no incidences of violence whatsoever among our staff and or our residents. We treat people with dignity and respect, recognizing that we are all part of the same community. As a nonprofit organization, that relies on grant funding, we are committed to serving our residents and improving their lives. While we, while we may not have deep pockets, we have always been enriched by our work and the relationships we form by those we serve. I urge you today to vote in support of rezoning our request to be a transitional living. And I do believe denying this request today would be a disservice to the Omaha community. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that was our last proponent, right? Okay. I'll move to opponents now. If I can get a, maybe a show of hands of how many are intend to speak in opposition. All right. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lori Smith, and I live at 4509 Madison Street. <clears throat> and as they said, it's a nice, quiet neighborhood, and that's the way I'd like to see it stay. Where this house is located, the back goes right down into a playground park. There are also two grade schools that are real close by. Um, I've had two stepsons that were incarcerated as well, and I know being in a transition house is a, is a must, but I also know that it's, they don't always succeed the first time around, so I personally don't want a transitional house in my neighborhood. Hello. 
My name is Mariela Munoz. I am at 4520 Monroe Street. I'm here in Omaha. And hearing these um, ladies speak, I think it is wonderful. The work that they are doing, um, I agree that, yes, we need to help those transition. And I am not opposed to that. However, I agree with my neighbor, Lori. We are neighbors. Um, and there's other neighbors that were not able to come um, speak. And on their behalf, we want to continue to have the freedom that we see with the kids walking up and down the streets without that fear. And I heard a couple things that made my gut uneasy. One is I heard the word being used, um, I believe it was the phrase, these people or those people or they, we're all people, regardless of what we have done or not done. However, as people, we make these decisions. Nobody puts these decisions there in our heads but ourselves. And I understand that, yes, we need people around us to help make these decisions, the correct ones, that will be helpful to our society. But I also agree there is not enough help. There are not enough resources. And I also heard a district specialized for this. Why not? This is a necessity. And I do not, I would not like to have this be technically on my backyard. There is a park right there, and we visit that park. I see a lot of people there. Just the thought of this, yes, I have to tell you, it does make me uneasy because of the choices, not because of these people or those people. I work with people that do have a mental health condition, and I know how hard it is for them. And I cry for them because there's not enough help out there. So why don't we focus on that? I feel there will be high anxiety and high levels of depression for people transitioning because they don't know how to be out in the world. They may see people and they may feel judged and that anxiety, what is that going to come? What, what are they going to do about that? I, like I said, I, I don't disagree with the idea. I think what these ladies are doing or what this facility is doing is amazing. Um, I also heard other houses are not safe. They probably don't have the level of education and preparation that the, this Kia house has. And that is great. Yes, please help others, help other facilities get this level where you are at. But I urge you at this time, I don't know what neighbors were asked about this. I don't know how far out they asked. I was not asked. I did not know about this until a week ago. And... I, I do have to say I'm very fearful of my children. And um, that is all I have to say today. Thank you. Other opponents to that? Rebecca Barrientos Patlin, uh, 3305 E Street. Um, as a neighborhood founder and president called Burlington Road Neighborhood Association, we, like I said before, we constantly have uh, homes like this popping up. We know, and you guys have done a fantastic job. My husband's worked with you many times. Um, but um, the thing is, is these families, uh, two of them represented here, I thank you, uh, President, for going and, and actually walking the area. I had phone calls, and I, uh, my brother even called me and said, you know, I want to vote for him. I said, well, he's not, you're not in his district. <laughs> But uh, the thing is, is um, we have families that are putting money and, and their families' lives are, have embedded in this area for decades. And 
we know that transitional living, we need that for these people that are coming in and out. Um, and so I would ask that you would just continue to leave it as an R5. Do not rezone. Um, just based on the families that are, have called. I have family and friends that have called me in this area. And, um, and again, constituents that have voted for me. Um, they don't want this change. They, they like their life the way it is. And I pray for these. I honestly pray for these people that are transitioning because they do need, uh, you know, a hand up. You know, they do need uh, somewhere to go when they're coming out. And um, I appreciate you all for everything that you're doing. But please um, consider the, the families that are there that want to maintain their families. Uh, structure and everything they don't want to live in fear um, and and there's you know there's not just uh, drugs and alcohol there's there are sex offenders that do uh, come and reside at these places and there's a lot of children in this area so I thank you again thank you other opponents Good afternoon, my name is Joanne Catlett. I live at 4832 Polk Street. And to answer your question about how you never heard it, they only sent the letters to, with, to houses within 300 feet of 4810 Polk. So that's how somebody up on Madison or Monroe didn't really hear it. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, we've heard glowing testimonials about what MHA has done in Lincoln and and it seems to we've digressed a bit into mental health, et cetera, rather than the um, subject at hand, which is the rezoning. Um, I understand the need. I'm a retired nurse. I spent all my life taking care of people. But to, to put a little bit of background to this, this is the second time that we, the neighbors, the homeowners of Valley High Edition, have appeared to express our objection uh, to this particular zoning request. This house, 4810 Polk, was originally a top over bottom duplex. St. Louis duplex is what I understand they used to call those. And it was DIY'd by an owner into a huge eight to 10 bedroom house. When it went on the market about a couple years ago, we had cars up and down the neighborhood all afternoon looking at this particular house. And for a while, it was even a VR um, BO here recently when we had a lot of roofers in um, after the hailstorm. So the intention was that this was a house where all the occupants would be a family, if you will. Uh, that they would share common spaces such as the kitchen and the bathrooms and and we heard Tessa uh, Dominguez speak to that um, It really in my opinion um, Doesn't appear to fit the typical description of a multiple family dwelling That in my mind is duplexes fourplexes eight plexes apartment buildings We have several fourplexes within 300 feet of this particular house. Um, all of them have separate entrances, separate facilities, separate living quarters, etc. cetera. Um, initially, we got the first letter in March of uh, 22nd of, of 2023 that included the notice of the request to rezone and, um, and the schedule of the meeting uh, before the planning committee and a map of the immediate area showing all the our fours and fives and sevens and all of that is Greek to most of us. Several homeowners attended. Our spokesperson at that time, Nina Zimba, who was unable to attend today, though I understand she did write in to the council, as have some others. She lives at 4824 Polk. She did an excellent job of presenting our objections and stating the salient aspects regarding the proposal as such a poor fit for our neighborhood. She also submitted a list of signatures of the neighbors opposed, many of whom are elderly and unable to attend. Um, we have probably seven or eight 
houses on the block and within 300 feet of this particular home um, that where the individuals have lived 50 years or more. Um, Carol Dudzik of 4825 Polk, uh, a respected teacher from the Omaha Catholic School District, also added several points to Nina's presentation with our objections. Um, I'm not gonna recover all that, but we do have churches and schools um, and playgrounds that are adjacent or nearby. There is really no nearby public transportation though. Um, I guess uh, one of my objections would be the loose interpretation of multiple family residential district versus all the other houses on the block being two and some couple, th two, three, couple, four bedroom houses, um, single family homes. Um, I'd like to take a few moments to really speak about our neighborhood. Our one source defines family as a group of one or more parents and their children living together as a unit and all descendants of a common ancestor. Other sources say a family is a group of two or more people related by birth, marriage, and or adoption who live together. A basic unit in our society traditionally consists of two parents, either opposite sex or same sex, uh, rearing their children. So in summary, a couple of simple sentences about families. Uh, a family is a group of people who are related to each other. None of the transitional occupants that uh, Tessa Dominguez and MHA are proposing fit that criteria. They are not mothers, fathers, and children. Uh, they don't even include extended family members, such as grandparents and aunts and uncles. We have about six homes right now with multi-generational uh, occupants, all of the same family. Grandma, her daughter, her daughter's kids, the original owner, his daughter, his stepdaughter. I mean, I could go on and on. All of these statements about families perfectly describe the Valley High Edition, the current dynamics of the homes on our block and in our neighborhood. Um, rezoning and approving that special use permit is, in, again, in my opinion, a direct opposition of our current zoning. We are taxpaying citizens who take care of our homes and our yards, who walk our dogs, who wave to each other in passing, who visit across the back fence or the front yard, who even go out to dinner once a month as a group, finally calling it neighbor night. We care about our neighborhood. Tessa and her affiliation to the Mental Health Association of Lincoln are proposing to introduce revolving groups of unrelated individuals living under the one roof in our neighborhood, in one house. And this is really not what we feel is the concept of the multiple family residences. We respectfully request that you, that you do as the planning board did and deny this request for rezoning. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that was our last opponent. Is there any other opponents that wanna to speak today? Okay. Thank you, public hearings closed. Mr. Harding, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. A um, lot to unpack here, but um, let me let me first state that um, when this was when this was on the Omaha Planning Board's agenda um, a month or so ago, and I listened to the the testimony of, of Tessa and Casey and and some of the others, um, and was very impressed uh, by their their mission, their passion, um, their experience, their record. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, many on the, the, the planning board who did vote against the rezoning request um, were also very impressed by, by the testimony to the point where, you know, they were saying, please come back to us with the, with the you know, location in the right zoning and, and we'd be happy to, to support you. And I find myself in that position as well, too. Um, it, it means a lot that, uh, that Sheriff Hansen uh, took the time to look at your facilities in Lincoln. I know the facilities in Lincoln have been very successful and have integrated well into the neighborhood. I think that I, I understand some of the neighbors' concerns in that regard, but I understand, too, that 
there's there's a track record where it's it's been proven that it has been able to successfully integrate into a neighborhood um, and i think there are programs that that do that and there are programs that aren't as successful but again i think uh, i think tessa and her group have shown that that they are a good group to to partner with in, in that regard having said that though i um along the lines of i i, I I, I echo a lot of the, the planning uh, board's um, comments about supporting it in the right area. And this is in, in the planning board's determination as well as the city of Omaha's planning department, not master plan compliant. Um, I, I too would be very supportive of this facility in, in an area with the right zoning for it. Um, let's face it we th this is this is a great need that our community has we have a willing group and a successful group track record wise that's um, shown that they want to be participants in it too um, I miss Harris um, I'm familiar a little bit with rise too I had some communication with uh, with Jeremy years ago over um, the efforts with uh, with what you are doing too and and know that you are good partners as well too but I think um, I think I'm going to ask um, uh, Mr. Fanslow from from planning to address some of the the comments as a, as it relates to um, what is allowed by right and in our ordinances and, and state statutes as it oppose as it relates to, to group living and and the determination of um, the master plan compliancy as it relates to this application. Dave Fanslow, City Planning. Um, I can speak to the, ma I'll, I can answer any questions you have, but generally, um, as you stated and as what's in the report is, uh, this area of the town, this area of the city is designated for low density residential um, development that comes with zoning or residential zoning anywhere from R1 to R5, which allows for single family homes, duplexes, uh, and, and things like that. Um, to rezone, to, to be able to ha locate this use on this property, as you've stated, would not be master plan compliant. <clears throat> um, rezoning it to a multi-family residential district um, could, um, destabilize start to destabilize the neighborhood we've seen a number of these requests over the year um, either residential residentially zoned property go into a higher uh, intense residential district or commercial um, districts wanting to uh, infringe on single-family residential neighborhoods so we've always um, held through to that part of the master plan uh, we don't um, generally support up zonings in areas where um, the area is basically set aside and to be developed for single-family residential neighborhoods. Uh, thank you. And I, I would just to make sure that we're, we're clear. To, when you're when you said the word destabilize, I wrote that down immediately. Sure. You don't you don't mean because of the use. It's it's because of the 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 creep of of and I'll use one of your other terms upzoning, which means a more intense use of the. The, the ground or the property that's what you're talking about when you're saying destabilizing not necessarily as as to what the use is correct um, I believe that is correct what you what you said <clears throat> um, not particular to this use but as as the zoning districts um, become more intense obviously there's more intense uses that come along with those districts right I just wanted to make sure that that, you, that, that was the clarification of, of what the, the words actually meant um okay that's so i again i i'm i'm going to be supportive of the the planning de, planning department and the planning board's recommendation um but I, I again i think your testimony has been very impressive as well as your track record and, and i hope we can find a, a a place for you to do business in omaha because we need your services thank you mr bagley you're recognized thank you mr president Tessa, when you would reach out to me, it was back, I think, in January, and we 
you said you wanted to talk about transitional living in Omaha. You were from Lincoln. So I think we played a little back and forth and we got to meet in early February and we had coffee and you laid out your experience, your life experience, number one, with you and your husband. And you talked about your grandkids and the commitment you have to helping people that were on the same path that you came down. Um, and the great success that you had in Lincoln. So as we talked over coffee, you, you told me the address was 4810 Polk. And we had a great conversation that morning about what your goals were and what you wanted to do. And making the trip in from Lincoln, and you were very candid, not only in that conversation, but also in your comments today on you didn't just want to come and dump this in the middle of somewhere. You said, what do I have to do? Help me, get me connected to neighborhood groups or the community. I think you did all those things. Um, I even hooked you up, um, connected you to the Nebraska Center for Workforce Development and Education that I have a strong passion working with, with Project Reset. So your evolution of the work that you do you don't do it in a minimum effort. You are a maximum, who can I talk to? What can I do to make this better? And when it got to the city side, I know, so you had, you had had a lot of conversation, I believe, with my colleagues as well. You talked to Mr. England in planning recently, went over some things um, on the zoning that uh, Council Member Harding has talked about here today. Um, and. and even the cost of some fire code issues that I wasn't going to pretend to be an expert on that. So I know that's why Mr. England was going to connect you to the proper people to have those discussions. Your goal and, and your passion for this is absolutely commendable. And as it been mentioned before, it's about getting the right location, the right fit for this. And I had a conversation uh, that Council President Fesserson and I, who we drove by there a couple weeks ago on a lunch break to kind of survey it. I know Harper Park is behind there. I have some relatives that live down on the west end of Polk Street, up the street from this, that have lived down there for decades. And when I had a conversation uh, with Mr. Fanzel and Mr. England, I said, walk me through this. Well, if it can't be here, where can it be? And they, they gave me a map, and it was east across 48th Street, the zoning. There's multiple locations for that. So with this location and the recommendation of the planning board, um, I'm, I'm not going to support this today. But you have my personal phone number. And anything I can do in the future to find the proper fit in Omaha that is not 4810 Polk Street, I, as I said in a couple emails to you in text, and we had talked last week as well on the phone, anything I can do to help the goal. And um, Connie, the, the testimony, I don't know if she's back there, um, her personal story that she gave today, people struggle. And your MHA is there to provide the help. And I'm committed to you and that goal in Omaha to find a good location for that that'll fit into the city master plan. And if there's things we can look at in the future here, um, I'm certainly open to looking at anything in the future going forward with that. But as I told you last week, I didn't want to be suspenseful for you. I, I told you what my decision was going to be. But I am committed again to helping your organization and the transition that people need to get back on their feet. Recidivism is costly for taxpayers. Your goals are to help people get back on their feet. And again, I commend you for you and your husband and your family's commitment. And I'll look forward to supporting you every day in every way that I can. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rowe, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to echo uh, the comments made by Mr. Harding and Mr. Begley. Um, I too met with Tessa in, uh, earlier this spring, probably even in the wintertime. And, um, her testimony then uh, was equally as uh, persuasive as the testimony today. And so I appreciate you guys taking the time to come tell your story and, and uh, understand this, this is a tough vote for us um, because we believe in the mission, we understand your mission, and we know and recognize 
the need. And I can tell you that uh, Mr. Festerson and Harding and I serve on the planning committee and we had lengthy discussions with Eric and Dave and their whole team uh, trying to come up with some answer. Um, and it's just the problem is that not being master plan compliant causes us a problem. And uh, so we're going to have to vote no. I'm going to have to vote no because I trust the planning department. I trust the planning board. I trust Mr. England. And, um, but your story is compelling. And uh, trust me, we want to vote for it, but uh, we just can't. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for the work that you do. And uh, press on. Thank you, Ms. Milton. Well, <clears throat> thank you. And uh, I'm not going to repeat everything that everybody else said, go to cut it short and sweet, but I do. I want to thank you. You did come and meet with all the council members, and I think our, our like quick meeting turned into a lot longer meeting. We probably should have done lunch afterwards. Uh, well, your program is amazing. And we also talked about other programs that aren't so amazing. And what we, what we don't want to do is set a precedent to allow maybe other groups to do the same thing. I think what your what you've done in Lincoln with the Kia and the Hanu House are, is amazing. I want to see that happen here. I want to see more than just one. You've done two in Lincoln, and if we're twice the size, then we probably need four here. And I would love to help help you do that. And if we could just pick up this house because it looks like the perfect layout and just move it somewhere else, it'd be just perfect. Um, and we have approved these. Uh, transitional living houses um, in other places against where we've had other neighbors potentially come and say they don't want it there um, because it's zoned right. It, it, they were doing everything that they should. So please don't lose hope in us because we will continue to have hope in you. And I look forward to welcoming you and helping you um, open more uh, of those transitional living houses right here in Omaha. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just would like to um, give a salute to this organization that felt very strong about this initiative and brought this to our attention. Um, housing, especially for those that have been re, uh, that have been incarcerated and then have to come back into the normal civilian world, um, it's very challenging for them to find housing. And so at the very least today, um, what you've brought to our attention is that this, there is a great need for this and that we should be spending time and energy on addressing this concern. Where do we provide a place for individuals that you represent and that you're supporting to bring back into our society. And I just want to say that, again, that what you've done and what you are currently doing, I just applaud you for your effort. I support you in your initiative. I think that what you're doing is wonderful. And um, keep doing the good work. Um, I've had the opportunity to speak to a couple of you uh, early on in the year. Your mission is great. Um, and I mean, I really want to support this um, vote today, but um, I've also heard some concerns about um, the neighbors and, and as it relates to the children there at the same time. And I don't really know how to balance that. I mean, your need is great and the neighborhood's need is great. Again, I applaud you for your efforts and let me know if there's anything that I can do to assist you on your journey. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further lights. Uh, if there's a motion, that would be appropriate to both 21 and 22 at the same time. There's a motion to deny and a second on 21 and 22. Roll call. Harding. Johnson. Um, the question? It's a motion to deny. Um, yes. Melton. No. Rowe. No. Bagley. Aye. 
Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Thank you for your testimony. Yes. Without objection, um, we're going to move up item number 48 to uh, have the same public hearing as item number 23 since they are the same case. Uh, so, uh, Madam, please read number 23 and 48. Okay. One public hearing can be held for items 23 and 48. Of re item 23 is a resolution to approve the Laramore Tax and Commit Financing Redevelopment Project Plan located at 3483 Laramore Avenue in an amount up to $213,518. And item 48 is a resolution to approve the agreement with the Omaha Economic Development Corporation to rehabilitate <coughs> 45 multifamily housing units for tenant households located at 3483 Laramore Avenue. Public hearing and vote on number 23 and 48 <coughs> is today. Just a note for council members, the two items will require separate votes when we get to that. Proponents, please. <coughs> yeah, good afternoon. Don Seaton, Omaha City Planning. I'm here to address primarily the TIF component of this project. Uh, the project is located at 3483 Laramore Avenue. Uh, it will be a uh, comprehensive rehabilitation of the Laramore building. This is a long, vacant, historic structure of about 45,000 square feet, built in 1944. Uh, the building is in poor condition with many code violations. So it's, uh, it's on the city's demo list. In fact, the uh, um, the inspectors in the city planning office that I worked with were pushing the applicants for demolition. Uh, well, told them to hold off a while while we work on the financing of this project. The rehab will uh, result in an affordable housing senior living facility with about 45 rooms. Uh, there's surface parking on the site and two surf two parcels across the street that are vacant. There'll be a surface parking lot for the project. The developer is the Omaha Economic Development Corporation, OEDC, uh, managed by CEO Michael Maroney. This project represents an investment of $19.7 million in North Omaha. The TIF support for the project is $213,518. This project meets the required criteria of the TIF program, was approved by the TIF committee and the planning board. It's an appropriate land use for this location. It gets rid of a blighting influence in the neighborhood and it complies with the city's goals of the mass city's master plan. We ask for your approval. Thank you. Other proponents today? Uh, Michael Maroney, uh, 2221 North 24th Street, uh, President of Omaha Economic Development Corporation, uh, the developers of the project, and I'll answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Any other proponents on 23 and 48? Alyssa Solachik, Omaha Planning Department, and I'm here to speak on agenda item 48, which is the CDBG and home agreement with OEDC for the rehabilitation of the Laramore building. Um, this project, as well as the home funding and CDBG funding amounts, were included in the 2022 Annual Action Plan, which was presented to and approved by the City Council on June 28th of 2022. Um, recommend approval of the agreement, and I am available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Other proponents? Uh, Donnie Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation. I've known Mike for many, many years. We've had disagreements on different directions and investments, but he's a highly intelligent young man. But I invest in this program. I think he's buying a, a deadbeat, but I asked him to join us, me and Mr. Trump, to send cars to West Africa. But he wants to do this. Good luck to him. Other proponents, please. Good afternoon, <clears throat> Blau Nasila, 3465 Laramore Avenue. I don't know if, uh, I got here late, but I was struggling with your parking meters out there. <laughs> I am completely illiterate to them, but I wanted to make sure you guys got this letter only to support the fact that my father and I have owned the property at 3465 Laramore for about 45, 46, uh, 44, 45 years. I have had a relationship 
with Nova. Um, I've worked there. Uh, it shows I worked there three times. I actually worked there four times because I helped them transition from 3483 Laborn to Cooper Village. Okay, long-standing relationship. That building has been in my life. That building right there has been in my life for 44, 45 years. I am in support of two things. Either it's approved and he's able to renovate that building or you tear it down. Either one of the two. I have concerns about it being vacant for years. Children and adults have penetrated that building. I understand that was drugs going on. Kids have been so far as being on top of that building, okay? One of the neighbors even videoed someone in the back of the building and they were, it was at night and they were in a black long coat doing this. We don't know what it was, but it looked like some type of ritual. Uh, Mr. Uh, Maroney has put a fence around that place. He's put cameras around that place and still to really no avail. If someone wanted to get inside that building, they could and they have. So I'm in support of either fixing it or tearing it down. But either way it goes, the neighbors are concerned about raccoons that are in that building, rash that could be in that building, mold that could be in that building, rodents period that could be in that building. I'm also concerned because I'm the nearest to that building. If someone was to pull in the parking lot and point their cars east, and if I had my kitchen door open and my kitchen window, you could look right into my home. At night, lights are glaring right from the car lights into my home. So it's, 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 a, it's a concern for me. It's gonna be a concern for me regarding the traffic. For 10 or 12 years, we haven't had any traffic. Now I got to deal with that. Had a very positive relationship with Nova. I don't know what kind of relationship I'm gonna have with, uh, uh, I've, I've known Mike for years. And so I trust that his initiative is going to work. But I have to con concern myself, like a lot of neighbors, I have grandchildren who periodically stay with me. We have neighbors across the street from 36th Ave to 34th Ave. That's nothing but a bunch of children. We don't know what's going to happen with that. But we're concerned. Concerned about the traffic. Because right now, we don't have that traffic. We don't know how it's going to be once people are in and out visiting uh, their relatives, the people, the residents that's going to be there. We don't know. It's going to kind of disrupt the rhythm of that community. But again, I would prefer for something to happen than to look at that sore eye because it's been there too long and something needs to be done. I commend him for wanting to take on the challenge of wanting to renovate it and have it a housing, I think it was for the elderly or something. So people, excuse me, uh, people over 65 and over. Well, you can look at me and tell I'm over 60, 62 or 65, I'm in my 70s. So I don't mind, but certain things need to be taken into consideration as far as disrupting the way the neighborhood, we're not concerned too much about kids when they play out there, but new traffic causes new problems. And those are things that we have to consider. The other thing, and lastly I'll say, is that I need a petition to block off me from that parking lot. And I'm being honest. Unless you are comfortable with people being able to look inside your place, you can't open up your door for, and, and be comfortable that you don't have anyone looking inside your home. I don't know how any of you feel, but that's not comfortable. And that's one of my biggest concerns outside of what I said about the rodents and what have you and the traffic. That is concern. We have noise barriers as you go out, was a 68 or so heading towards Lincoln from like 42nd to 72nd or what have you. You got noise barrier. I need a barrier. I want my privacy. I've enjoyed my privacy for over 10 years. I don't want to give that up. And I shouldn't have to give it up. So, and this is, a, this is an eyesore for the city of Omaha. It's an eyesore for District 2. We need to do something. But in the meantime, being an eyesore 
and then my life being disrupted after being comfortable with the relationship I've had when NOVA was in operation, and now that there's nothing going on there to change my life, either there to be a petition something put up, Mike and I can work on certain things, but either do something with it or tear it down. All right, thank you. We can ask some of those you. questions here in a minute. Thanks. Any other proponents today? See none. Any opponents? Good afternoon, City Council. My name is Celeste Butler, 3504 Fowler Avenue. A little bit over roughly 30 years plus, my husband and I family brought that home. Um, it's originally uh, the Emanuel Hospital building. It is a historical building. Um, even the property that sits behind it where I live and down in the other part of the area near 34th Street is the original Emanuel Hospital property. I have several concerns today because after NOVA moved out and OEDC acquired this property, it has sit and been unkept even today. If you take the time to drive through there in that alley, you will see that building is still wide open. You will see the weeds have grown up at least to the second story of the building. You will see that it's open where at certain times of the day, we have the children in the neighborhood as well as gang members on the rooftop having rooftop parties, the whole nine yards. I have sent emails, I have talked to various different people, even my emails, some have been blocked by people because they don't wanna know what's going on in this building. There is drug activity, prostitution, people who say they don't want nothing to do with North Omaha is in this back alley doing business, on that property doing business. I have reached out to OEDC on numerous occasions to get this building sealed up. I have reached out to the city and sent emails and asked for this building to be torn down. So my concern today is OEDC's intent for improving living standards for the elderly that they say is going to be in this property. So they say there's going to be roughly 40 something um, units for elderly to be able to reside in there. I think if it's going to be converted into something, that is the best case scenario, to, scenario if it's going to be converted. However, just a few weeks ago, the zoning board approved, uh, I believe it's three parking slots near the front of the building to be converted for um, ADA parking. However, that's only three slots. And once again, I'm talking about intent. If you intend to do right by the elderly that you say is going to be in this building, you have a parking lot to the east of this building and you have a parking lot that they own on the north side of the building. So on the east side, which is right here, it's on the slope and an incline. Anybody that has any mobility issues is going to have a very difficult time getting from the lower end of that parking lot up that inclined hill to be able to access and enter what you're calling elderly living. The, prop the parking lot to the north side of the building is a major street. Once north high traffic is released, that whole street is gridlocked. So you got elderly on that side of the street that's gonna to try to cross a narrow sidewalk to get to where that building is to be able to access that building. The intent is what I'm talking about. If you said you're caring about the elderly, their living, living conditions and standard, those are two major issues right there that does not fall into alignment with what you say you're gonna do with this building. In addition, for the time they've owned this building, we're talking at least 13 to 15 years, give or take a little bit. That, like I said, there has been no care for it whatsoever. We're talking mold, mildew, asbestos, and whatever other environmental hazards that is in this building. Um, rodents, raccoons the size of dogs at night, and it's utterly disgusting. I have ha tried to have conversation and be in conversation 
and the conversations is not happening. It wasn't until a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago approximately when we got notification, but only a few of us in the area to have a meeting um, at the Washington Library to start discussing the issues that are concerned with the neighbors. Some of which this young man talked about is we've had our privacy from some part. We're not even, when we talked about it in the last meeting and asked for a fence or some type of privacy that would separate 40 something people looking in your face every morning, every night when you come home, I don't get to enjoy my backyard anymore. Uh, roughly two years ago, and I, I couldn't pull up any of my technology today, um, on top of this building, over 200 shots was fired, and I don't think it made the news. And I have been in contact with the police department, the sheriffs, and everybody else to try to find out what happened in and on that property. I even spoke to Mike Maroney. We've had meetings with Councilwoman uh, Juanita Johnson at the Benson Library a couple years to try to get him to take ownership and be responsible and be accountable to the people in the neighborhood concerning this property. So I'm asking for a no right now until we can establish at least some type of relationship of what you want to do and how to move forward with this so that it's beneficial to all. My safety is the utmost concern. I do not sleep at night, especially since they fired over 200 shots off that building. I can't tell you the last time I had a good night's sleep. My nerves are shattered and I have had zero help and I plead with you today for an absolute no until they work with the people in the community and at least I make the most noise and ask the most questions because I'm not moving. My husband and I brought that property 30 something years ago and all respect to him and may he rest in peace. It's because of him I'm still able to live there. My, I live there, my grandkids come there and I feel like they're not safe. In my backyard, where I used to host backyard parties and events, I've not done it since they fired 200 shots off that building because I'm not safe. I'm a woman, and I'm a woman who lives alone. And if I only have to stand and protect my own safety, I will. Since then, I have legally purchased two guns for my own protection. I see the drugs back there on a daily basis. And I plead with you today, uh, absolute no. Thank you. Any other opponents that want to speak today? Seeing on public hearings closed, Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, Michael, if you could come up um, and address some of the concerns that the neighbors are having. Um, there were a number of concerns, um, as, uh, as um, Celeste had indicated, um, she had come um, to um, Benson with you and I um, to discuss, this is when my first year in office, um, we discussed um, the concerns that she raised uh, regarding safety and the trees and the weeds and things like that. Uh, I just wanted on record that we did have that conversation. Um, you did agree to uh, begin mowing uh, you did secure the building um, with the fencing and also uh, some of the windows and things like that. But over the past year, it, it continues to be opened. Um, the fence is um, somewhat inferior product because it allows anyone to tear it down immediately within a day or two. Um, so. Again, um, I just want it on record that yes, um, we have had this discussion with Celeste and, and the condition of the building for at least a year going on too now that I'm aware of. And yes, um, this is a great opportunity to have a senior building come into play. This is the uh, best um, situation to address this concern overall, but before that building um, is built, um, the, the neighborhood pretty much needs to know how they're going to navigate and, and um, their concerns are addressed. And so if you could talk about the weeds, the open area, the drug activities. Um, she also mentioned about the parking conversion as it relates to 
the handicapped and the challenges based upon the configuration, the layout of the building and the rezoning of three parking lots, how that is going to be feasible um, for the tenants that will be in there. And then um, also talk a little bit about her concerns about the 13 to 15 years of no care to the building. If you could address those concerns that she's asked, I would really appreciate that. Well, that's a lot. I don't remember everything, but I'll <laughs> do the best I can. Uh, first of all, I don't agree with every, everything that was said, but hey, I just, won't argue. Just for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. Michael Moroni, 2221 North 24th Street. Uh, but I won't argue with what, what has been said. There have been issues. There have been problems. I admit that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, as soon as we board it up, they break back in. We board it up, they break back in. That's that's the nature. I'm not making excuses. That's just the reality. Uh, we have spent, when we acquired the building, it was probably 10 to 12 years ago when we acquired the building. It was right at the time Nova uh, was, was moving out. Uh, uh, we had, because of what was in there, our initial thought was that this was an opportunity to look to find an appropriate use of that facility consistent uh, or not inconsistent necessarily with what had been in there since that had seemed to be acceptable uh, to that neighborhood. However, we're not our organizations. We're not program people. We're more developers. Uh, so we were looking for uh, uh, entities that would provide the programming services to other kinds of uh, potential clients for that. We could not come up with it. About four years ago, we just decided, because uh, we were hearing uh, uh, what the, the neighbors, that uh, perhaps maybe we would go in a direction and with something we were more familiar with, which is senior housing. Uh, we are housing developers. We have a number of, uh, in fact, we have five senior developments right now that we've done in addition to uh, family uh, uh, developments. Uh, I can tell you that this has been a real challenge financially uh, to put together. Uh, as it was, it was indicated, this is an historic uh, designated building. Uh, anytime you have a historic property, that adds to the complexity of, of, of the development. Uh, then on top of that, we had COVID, which didn't help the situation. Uh, but we were able to, in the, within the last year, begin to put the financing together. Uh, we're probably only a few weeks away from this, all the concerns going away. I mean, I just, to stop now, would aggravate the situation rather than help the situation. Uh, but there again, I will not advocate that we we haven't been uh, remiss in some sense, but we've tried. Uh, like I said, again, we board it up, they tear the boards down. Uh, we put up cameras, well, unless you're standing there on 24 hours a day, by the time the police would get there or our security would get there, they're gone. Uh, but I would just say uh, again, uh, we're at that point now where all that goes away. Uh, to have, and it is for 62 and older, uh, low-income seniors. Uh, I don't think they would be considered a menace to anybody's neighborhood. Uh, and so I hope that answers most of the questions. If there's something I might have missed it. Yeah, the uh, parking concerns as it relates to the tenants. The, 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 well, the, well, the Part of the zoning was that we were putting three uh, handicapped parking stalls uh, where right now it's grass, but it's right next to the door. Uh, this was so that we could ensure that one, we'd be code compliant uh, in terms of having uh, uh, parking spaces for, for those who were, were uh, handicapped to the point where they needed assistance. Uh, our intent was and will always be that we are compliant with all city, state, and federal regulations. This, uh, getting that, uh, those, those parking stalls uh, on, the, on the ground right next to the front door uh, helped us meet that compliance uh, obligation. So she also um, was concerned about whether or not it would meet the needs of those tenants. Um, just having the three stalls alone, was that going to adequately address all of the handicapped 
needs as well as the senior citizen needs and going in and out of the building? Well, we're following code. code. Uh, I mean, we can make them all handicapped, and that doesn't mean they're going to be used. What There's a reason why I think uh, jurisdictions have minimum standards is that uh, everybody doesn't need uh, the same thing. Uh, we are within the compliance with federal and state and, and city regulations, uh, and we think that uh, we hope it's sufficient. In other words, if somebody would come to us and, and all those, those three uh, stalls were uh, occupied, then they would probably would not become a tenant in that building if they needed something we could not be able to, uh, to provide. So how will we address the concern that she says now that the building is open? She says currently if we, she challenged us to go by the building right now and we would see the building open and the uh, the weeds, the, tr uh, the grass would be outside of what is required. Uh, I, 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 I would have, I haven't been in a few days, but I don't know that the weeds are two stories high. Uh, it might need cutting, we will we'll cut it. Now, I do have somebody that, uh, whenever we contact them, we, once we know there's a, there's a board out or missing or something like that, you know, we try to get it back up there again. We put it up one day and it could be gone the next. My, I still say the point being is within the next two to three weeks, all of that will go away because the contractor will be on site they put probably even a much stronger fence than we have up there now, and there'll be somebody there on a daily basis. So you're saying within two to three weeks, this issue will has the potential of going away in terms of maybe getting a better fence. Um, the grass will be uh, manicured a lot better than what it has been um, over the past years. Yeah, I'm 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 saying that. I won't say 100%, but 90, 95% of these, those issues would go away. And how do we deal with the security? Because the cameras, um, my experience with cameras is that when cameras are functioning, um, we have a video feed of that, those activities. And so um, are we able to produce any video feed of, yeah. of, of what uh, and what traffic is coming around there and I'm, I'm just concerned that, you know, why is it that the police isn't able to assist with um, getting the uh, individuals, the intruders, um, from uh, stopping them from um, doing all of that activity. I've received a number of video feeds as well as you um, from Celeste um, showing the activities that they're doing over there and it's very and to be quite honest with you it's it's very scary uh, in a sense and so i'm i'm concerned yeah. about that as well yeah and there again there's not a whole lot we can do now about what happened but what we can do is going forward and like I said, once once we uh, uh uh set the contractor loose they will one they will be responsible for the building, and, and because of the fact that they will have some of their development, some tools and stuff in there, they would probably better, even better secure the building than it is now. And like I said, they would be in there on a daily basis, uh, and that in itself becomes a deterrent uh, for folks. Okay, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that as long as um, we have an agreement that we are going to secure that building within yeah. two weeks and that this new um, construction firm will take over uh, making sure that it isn't a continued to be a menace to the neighborhood because in its current state it it yeah. looks like that we've had two in the last six weeks we've had two meetings with the with the neighborhood the most recent one was two weeks ago the first one we had uh, there were a number of questions that, and concerns that was raised, mm -hmm. uh, and we said that we would bring our architect and our general contractor to a subsequent meeting, which did occur about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. to help answer some of those questions. One of the things that our general contractor did at that time was actually give his card, because he's going to be the project manager. Mm -hmm. He actually gave his card to Ms. Butler 
I said he'd be on site on, on, on a regular basis. If she had any concerns ongoing, she could contact him. She knows how to contact me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we're doing everything we can mm-hmm. uh, to make sure we mitigate uh, a lot of those, all those concerns, actually. Yeah, I had the benefit of being at that meeting, yes. and I do know that um, the card was exchanged. There was a question as well as the gentleman here um, raised the question regarding privacy concerns. If there's going to be something put up to ensure their privacy um, uh, along that back end of the building. Well, that's what, because of the grade, particularly f- from front to back, mm-hmm. uh, it's a big slope and the building sits up high. Mm-hmm. I don't think we can put a fence up high enough to, to block that. But at the same time, Keep in mind, these residents are going to be 62 years and older. I don't know that they're going to be standing at the window peeking at people. Uh, right. So maybe a fence is not the do-all, well, we, fix-all. We, yeah, we weren't, gonna put a, we weren't going to put a fence up because that would have just sent kind of a wrong message. We want this to be part of the neighborhood. There will be, you know, you, 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 it'll be filled with senior citizens, most of them will be active. This is a, a, a independent living uh, situation. Uh, and I j- just see that they may be more, more of a benefit mm-hmm. than anything else in the community. So can we explore something else that could help them, uh, the neighbors feel a little bit more comfortable? We, 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 can yeah. we explore that? Can we yeah. sit down? Because remember, yeah. I was there two weeks ago as well. Yeah. Um, can we continue? Uh, engaging the neighborhood with we committed that night that we would on a on a regular basis we would do some communications and convene to make sure that the neighborhoods were uh, at least kept abreast of what's going on what we're doing and for us to respond to any concerns that uh, may have come up during this process so we also talked about a quarterly conversation with the neighborhood we also talked about a construction schedule so that they're aware of any pitfalls or anything that they may need to do to navigate while this uh, construction is underway for 18 months. Yeah, and that's part of the communications we said we would be providing on a, on a, on a as need or regular ba- regular enough basis that hopefully, and then if, if it's not regular enough, I'm sure they will tell us, and then we can become more regular. I'm okay. All right, I, I'm in support of yeah. the the new building um, as long as these terms that yeah. we just discussed are that we com- yeah. we actually um, do them. So I, I move to support this. Yeah. I'll second. Mr. Rowe, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Maroney. I appreciate your uh, willingness to take on the risk and, and take a shot at building some subsidized housing in North Omaha for the seniors that they are uh, lower income. I do have some questions that uh, uh, pertain to timeline, time frames. Mm-hmm. I, I know in, in my district we have a, a, a property that really needs to be demolished and uh, has been recently purchased by a developer, out-of-state developer, and, <coughs> and it's just taking so long to get um, mobilized, to get anything done on that property. And so my question to you is, I, it, it appears you have the capital stack secured yes it looks like every tax credit in the, in the country is available <laughs> that you you've tapped into that so i'm not worried about yeah. the money what what i have concerned with what i'm concerned with is the time frame what kind of what kind of time frame uh, when you're working with historic where you're working with the the national park system yeah. man those guys are hard to deal with what kind of what's well, what's your time schedule well, look like yeah we, we we have the part one is complete on the on the historic designation part two which is the the design work has been approved by the park service the final one part three would will be approved after it's done okay. so that's not an issue for us anymore as long as we comply with uh what our uh, you know our design plans that have been approved by the park service <laughs> and as far as the time frame is concerned i say it's anticipated that within the next two to three weeks if it's school four weeks i'm sorry but as quickly as possible, uh, we would be signing the uh, order for the contractor to proceed with the construction. And at that point in time, they start work. And uh, it's that 
anticipated to be about an 18-month process. We hope to be started by early July, late June, early July, with a completion late next year. So I noticed that you have Alley Pointer as our architect for the architecture. Yes. Um, and the, the plans that, are, that were presented for the uh, Parks Department are probably not construction ready. Oh, yes. How, oh, we, we, we've got building permits. from those? Well, we've already got building permits. We're, we're ready to start construction as soon as we can sign all the final papers on, on, on the funding. Okay. And uh, Boyd Jones is going to be your contractor? Boyd Jones is the contractor. And they're ready to mobilize? They've been, a, we, they've been on board for four or five years. <laughs> well, three, three years probably. Okay, I, yeah. I just get, I yeah. think you get my point. I just don't want this thing to languish Trust for another we two don't, years. We don't need Because I would rather just see it bulldozed if it was yeah. going to be that. Yeah, no, we're ready to go. We we apply for the building permits. They've been paid for. We, they can't issue them until, uh, well, they might have already, they might have issued them because we uh, were approved as a zoning board, and I think that was the, the last the last thing. So, yeah, we're ready to go. Okay, that, that I just wanted to make sure yeah. that I was clear on that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Milton. Yeah, I just want to say, Celeste, I'm voting yes for this for all of the reasons that you came up and talked about. Because the only way to get this moving and going and to have a better place, I think, is from what I saw in this packet, which is very complete, as Councilman Roth said, with the capital stack. So I want to see this get moving because I don't want to see that property linger any longer yeah. with the problems neither, neither that Celeste is having to deal with. Yeah. And I, I don't want to have a repeat of 200 shots ever again for, for yeah. Celeste. So I, hopefully you c it sounds great, get moving. Hopefully with our vote today, um, you'll, be, yeah. you'll be right on track to get this project going and completed. Yeah. That's Thank, a, you. That's Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, there's no further lights. There was a motion and a second to approve number 23. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Is there a motion to approve number 48? Yes. Can I motion ask a question about the application? I'll second. Okay. Motion and a second. Roll call. Um, um, Celeste is saying something here. Is that okay. public hearing's done. We're in voting phase. Um, okay. We can engage okay. afterwards if you'd like. Okay. Uh, motion. Yeah. There was a motion and a second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Um, no, we're on to number 24. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Item 24, a resolution to approve the Hamilton Village Senior Suites Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Plan located at 4102 Hamilton Street in amount up to $558,092. Public hearing and vote on number 24 is today. Proponents, <coughs> please. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Don Seaton, Omaha City Planning Department. <clears throat> this project is located at 4102 Hamilton Street. Uh, the project site is comprised of six lots located along the nor north side of Hamilton. Three are occupied by vacant single family homes. The site will be cleared and a new 59 unit apartment building will be constructed. Uh, there will be 67 on site parking stalls. The apartment structure will be four and five stories tall. The apartments will be a mix of market rate and affordable housing units. This is what the site looks like currently looking northeast. These are the three homes, vacant homes that are gonna be demolished. <clears throat> the apartments will be a mix of market rate and affordable housing units. Uh, the project has LIHTC funding, low income housing tax credits uh, in their capital stack. The developer is Hamilton Village Senior Suites, LLC. It's managed by Melvin Sudbeck and Jim Posey. The total project investment in North Omaha is about thir approximately $13 million. Uh, the TIF support for the project is $558,092. Project's been approved by both the TIF committee and the planning board. It uh, meets all the required criteria for the city's TIF program. It's an appropriate land use for this location and it complies with the goals of the city's master plan. We ask for your approval. Thank you. Any other proponents on 24? Melvin Sudback, 1625 Woodland Drive, here to represent uh, Hamilton Suites or Hamilton Village Senior Suites. Uh, any questions to answer? Thank you. Other proponents? 
Seeing none, any opponents? Donnie Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation, 4928 North 52nd Street. And Mr. Pedersen, I understand that you was probably in high school in 1977, and President Carter had a program here, and you might get kind of confused on this, but. We gotta make sure we're uh, keeping, keeping the topic. I think most of all you folks are in high school probably at the time. <laughs> anyway, uh, we, Marty Schubert and I, we had an agreement that we were looking more at jobs for North Omaha, and not so many buildings, because you're getting buildings but with no jobs to pay for it. And Mr. Ken, uh, Mr. Uh, Michael Maroney and myself and your friend, Mr. Ken Johnson, who was on the planning department, they had a program. Mr. President Carter had sent us all down to this Hilton Hotel. Well, whoever came up with the best idea get a trip to Washington, D.C., right? And that still was an argument then. Where do we get jobs from? Because the meatpacking plant had left. But I realized some of you folks were still in high school at the time. I was only 24 years old, so since I, I was too young, they sent me out to the United Nations, and we're still looking for jobs. Marty Shuka said, we need jobs. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents to number 24? <coughs> I'm sorry, he was, a, he was a proponent, wasn't he? <laughs> okay, he was an opponent, okay. Any other opponents to number 24? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, planning Department, have a few questions. Um, you mentioned that this project um, was going to consist of affordable housing. Um, can you um, be more descriptive in what that means, what that looks like? Now, there's some details in the planning staff report. I'll defer to the developer, but it is a mix of housing um, prices. All the units are going to be the same, but uh, the rental rates are different on, on them. And if I may, I'd prefer to uh, defer to Melvin Sudbeck, the developer. Yes. So with the LIHTC, there are certain AMIs that have to be met, so we've got some 30, 40, 50, 60 percent AMIs that the, the, the renters can qualify for. And so, can you break that down for the record, please, so that um, people in the community uh, know what that looks like, if you don't mind? I, I don't have those numbers with me, in front of me. And did you present those numbers to the planning department? Uh, those. I'm sure it was all part of the, the, the packet. I, I don't remember. It's been quite a few months ago since we've been in the planning department. Okay, Don, um, I'm curious as to what that looks like. It is in the planning staff report for both the TIF committee and the planning board, which is in your packets. I, I don't have it in front of me. I don't recall the numbers for the units uh, as far as how many were which rate, um, but there is uh, the rates are broken down in the staff report. Um, could I get a copy of that? It's in your packet. In this package here? Yes. So when that question was asked, how come we couldn't just, I mean, why couldn't we just say what that was? I want this on the record is what I'm Correct, correct. Um, I, I don't have the staff report in front of me. It's been a while since I wrote it. Um, I've been out of town for about two and a half weeks and have returned to work on new projects. It's one of those trivia items, important, but one of the small details uh -huh. I don't have memorized right off the top of my head. Okay. But it is there. The information is available. We have some other lights and speakers. And it is Perhaps in the public record. Can look at that and pull up the document while we're talking. Um, I'm, I'm not finished yet yeah. um, with Go. my question, yeah. but Keep I appreciate on. that. Um, we mentioned also jobs. Um, this That's a part of... Uh, Correct. The TIF program. Can we break down what that is yes. again from well, the record? For the record, I'd like to have that information available t so that those that are listening and that is on the record. We are dealing with government funds. Correct. The applicants estimate five permanent positions and uh, 80 construction related jobs. Uh -huh. And that's also a public record in the application. Uh, again, I can read that. Yeah. Um, well, it's in the public. I just want to point out that it is a part of the official record. Right, but I want that to be on the record. No, that's what they estimated for employment. Uh, 
um, while you're looking that up, I'm, I'm let me do some little, um, just some housekeeping here. Um, we um, in North Omaha in District 2, um, we're seeing a lot of moving parts regarding constructions and there is some concerns in the area regarding rent controls, regarding um, whether or not um, these uh, developments are going to outprice out, out folks out of the area, uh, whether or not these rental, um, the cost of the, or the charge of the rent will be something that is affordable, meaning for someone that has an income of 21,000. When we look at um, the average income in North Omaha District 2, the average income is $21,000. So may this question, that this line of questioning may <coughs> not be important to some of my colleagues, it's important to my community because we need to know if, whether or not we will be able to oh, no, I, afford the guessing. rent that will be asked of us. Uh, housing affordability is a very important issue okay and we're very pleased that this is not just a market rate okay project um with litec funding they have requirements as as to what what they can do in terms of rents uh, staff report there are 59 units they're all 811 square feet the rents will range from 434 per month to $1,015 per month. And I believe Mr. Sudbeck can give us a breakdown as far as the numbers. The housing affordability is essential. I appreciate Thank that, you. but if, with that being said, we should be shouting to the rooftop that this is what we're doing and we should have that information Thankfully, available. Thankfully, it's not a market rate property. Thank you. So out of the 59 units, we have 12 units are market rate. Six units are assisted by home funds, which those rents will be $629 to $769 per month. We have 13 units, which meet the 30% AMI, which is $434 per month. We have nine units that meet the 40% AMI, which are $629 per month. We have 11 units, which meet the 50% AMI, uh, which is $769 per month. And at last, we have eight units that meet the 60% AMI, which is 809 per month in rents. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Okay, thank you. No further lights. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion or second to approve. Roll call. Harding? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Melton? Yes. Rowe? Yes. Bigley? Aye. Mr. President? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Consent agenda. Any member of the City Council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the City Council immediately following the consent agenda and the order in which they were removed, unless otherwise provided by the City Council rules of order. The public hearings on agenda items 25 through 28 were held on May 23rd. If there are no further lights, is there a motion? Motion and a second, roll call. Harding, Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley, yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. There's been a request to remove number 45 from the consent agenda, so we'll do that item separately. So first, we'll have the public hearings on agenda items 29 through 44, 46 through 47, and 49 through 56. If you wish to address the city council regarding these items, please come to the microphone indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by name, address, and who you represent, and if you are a proponent or an opponent. This is 29 through 44, 46 and 47, and 49 through 56. I think one of those gentlemen left their pen. So, <laughs> in the meantime, uh, Donnie Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, and North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation. And back to what I was trying to share with you, Mr. Ferguson. That's gotta be my address 49. Right. Yes, yes. All right, which, I have which item are you speaking to? Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> See, which pardon me? Which, which, num number? which item number are you speaking to right now? Who's also taught in class to talk to one person at a time. Which one do I talk to? You or him? <laughs> you guys said I 
All right, Donnie. Identify the number you're speaking to, or else you'll be out of, out of order, okay? Can I elaborate? No. <laughs> well, I was going to elaborate on all of them. So that I pick all the numbers, I'll go back to my seat, I'll pick all the numbers out, and then I'll come back. But in the meantime, I was going to elaborate on the whole system of this program. That's not in order. That's not in order? You have to speak to a particular item uh, that I just called up, as a proponent or an opponent. And you said 29 through? 44, 46, 47, and 49 through 56. And there's no general answer for all those questions? No. Okay. Then we'll have to go back to law school and check and figure out why my teacher said you have allowed to elaborate. Okay. Can I figure this out? Any speakers on these items that want to um, participate in this public hearing? I will note for a council member's knowledge, we do have the manager licenses um, on Zoom if needed. Rebecca Barrientos Patlin, uh, 3305 E Street, item number uh, 43. Um, I am a proponent of this. It's on the girder repair project on Dolman. They're fixing up the bridge there. And I just wanted to say thank you because um, this is a, cor a main corridor for Burlington Road Neighborhood Association uh, with all of our, um, sorry with all of our uh, businesses down there. Um, it's a very big concern on safety many times. And uh, in speaking with the project manager uh, yesterday, he uh, his name was uh, Peyton Sager, Sager. And he had mentioned to me that uh, they are in the preliminary phase for this. And I just wanted to, um, just to ask if they would keep you know, when it comes to working on this, if the bid process would, would keep uh, uh, Omaha workers working and not outsource. Um, so that's, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any other testifiers on these items? Could you repeat the numbers again, please, sir? Please come down. Good afternoon. My name is Angela Alexander. And it's in regards to item number 31. I reside at 1090 Jackson Street, Blair, Nebraska. And I am here just to represent Sodexo America, LLC, in the manager application name change for the liquor licenses. Thanks. I'm just here for questions, right? I'm just here for questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other testifiers on these items? Seeing none, public hearings closed. There's no further lights. I'll second. There's a motion and a second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Item 45, a resolution to approve the program agreement with the Nebraska Department of Transportation for the Cumming Street Northwest Radio Highway Military Avenue Corridor Study. Public hearing and vote on number 45 is today. Proponents, please. I believe we have Public Works or Vision Zero. Yeah, come on down, please. Good afternoon, Jeff Reeswoman, City Traffic Engineer, 1819 Farnham Street. Um, just want to talk briefly about the um, kind of purpose and need for, for this study and a little bit of background. Um, it, it, the, the corridor limits are um, on the state highway system. It comprises of link 28K, which is Military Avenue from Maple uh, to 70th uh, Avenue, and then all of Highway 64 from Maple to I-480. So basically, it's Military Ave, um, Northwest Radial, and then Cumming Street. We identified those limits because that entire segment is um, above typical um, crash uh, um, patterns or, 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 or uh, the average of, of, of the number of crashes that occur. So it's a, it's a segment we've had our eyes on for a while prior to even our uh, Vision Zero efforts. Um, what what transpired was um, MAPA had a call for projects, and uh, this was one of our uh, requests was to do a planning-related um, safety evaluation of this effort or of this corridor, and um, it was approved. So it will be going through the federal process um, administered by the state and through MAPA. Um, we would manage the project. Um, 
in, in the Public Works Department. Um, the, the corridor um, is unique. Uh, it does, like I said, experience a high number of crashes. Um, I would say it's attributable to the uh, horizontal curves, the numerous horizontal curves along that segment, um, the skewed intersections that are a result of those changes in alignment. Um, there's portions of it that have excess capacity, which could contribute to higher speeds. Um, unfortunately, the corridor has been averaging a, a fatality a, a year. Um, over the last several years. So it's something that we do want to address um, and, and, and make sure that we address the entire corridor as a whole and not any, not just one particular location. Um, and I'll be available for any questions. Great, thank you. Yep. Any other proponents that want to speak? Hello, my name is Krista Wassner. I'm with the City of Omaha Public Works Department. I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Other proponents? See none any opponents. Public hearing is closed. Jeff, uh, just a couple more follow-ups for you. I appreciate you coming down and speaking to this. Um, I'm fully supportive, uh, but just wanted to have a chance to have folks make sure they know about this because I think it is of great interest, this particular stretch, um, which is a long stretch, as you mentioned, from Burt, um, or coming all the way up to uh, Northwest Radial, up to 63rd, which kind of bisects uh, these three districts. and. Um, I know we've had a lot of concerns and even a fatality in the last week um, at uh, 50th Northwest Radial uh, near Council Member Johnson's district and mine. So the study is very welcome in terms of analyzing this corridor that's been a, a concern for a long period of time. Lots of speeding, as you note. Um, I also want to thank the police department for their efforts in trying to manage that uh, with some radar operations that I know they do. But truly the long-term answer is something like you're describing which uh, hopefully will produce some actionable results around you know, multimodal opportunities, safety projects, medians, sidewalks, all those kind of things. So I know this is just the first step, and I presume we would see a contract probably come back to the city council uh, managed by Public Works that would then seek these recommendations, and that could take the rest of this year. Uh, you want to describe the timeline a little bit further in terms of what people could expect in terms of seeing hopefully some low-hanging fruit or some changes in that respect? Well, so the, yeah, we, we, the next step in the process would be to um, select a consultant and that would come through uh, and then we would need probably about a, a year to, to conduct the study. There would be some public engagement efforts related to it. Um, the study would largely try to identify through um, you know, some, some short-term, mid-term, long-term type of improvements, um, like a lot of our corridor studies do. Um, we do want to address um, all the different modes of transportation that are a part of this highway, um, and then stakeholders as well. You, you mentioned there's lots of business districts, there's schools, and let's not forget it's a state highway. And so we'll need to, um, you know, work with them on what's what, what they would find as of, um, options. Um, it is so it is a truck route it's a primary uh, principal uh, arterial um, and then of course it has um, demand for pedestrians and buses and other transit so um, we, we need to take into account all those different modes um, so it's going to be a complex project but um, I would say it's going to be towards the end of next year that we would be able to identify um, some kind of um, strategic plan to address um, the safety along the corridor. And you would envision engaging the public in those discussions and having some public meetings about it yes. along the way, right? Yep. Yeah. I think that'd be important too. All right. From my perspective, uh, the sooner the better, um, given the challenges I, I know we've, we've seen there and I see it fully uh, complementary to uh, the Vision Zero briefing we had today and, and that effort coming to fruition here shortly too. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. No further lights. Is there a motion? I'll second. Roll call. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe, yes. Bigley, Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Item 57, a resolution to approve the nomination of Gail Thayer Street as a commemorative street mm -hmm. name on Pinckney Street from 24th Street to Florence Boulevard. Public hearing and vote on number 57 is today. Proponents, please. Roger, come on down. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> 
my name is Roger Sayers at 7304 North 122 Avenue Circle here in Omaha, 68142. And I am the older brother of Gail Sayers. And uh, I submitted the application for your approval. I think everyone's well aware of, of your brother, but you were faster than him, right? Is that what I understand? <laughs> I'd like to think so, yes. Well, Central High grad, that's the most important. That's the Central High grad, that's for sure, both of us. And the one thing I do want to say, though, is I know life events took him away from Omaha, but his heart was always in Omaha, at Central, at uh, Wesley House, at the Boys Club, the North Omaha community, and uh, he, he uh, genuinely was a, a proponent like I am of the Omaha area. So I hope for your approval on that regards. Thank you. Any other proponents that want to speak today? Seeing none, any opponents? Roger, how you doing, partner? How you doing, Don? Not too bad. Donnie R. Johnson, the Johnson and Question Foundation, North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation, 4928 North 52nd. I was taking this opportunity to say that Mr. Gail Sears was a wonderful athlete. At the same time, this is how it's supposed to be done. As these classes I took at the University of Nebraska of Omaha, my teacher in oral literature that I took for several years said you can elaborate. So did Will Rogers. In the meantime, the name's supposed to go on there after they pass on, just in case they make a mistake like O.J. Simpson. <laughs> Thank you. Any other opponents to number 57? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Roger, if you would come back up to the mic, please. Yes. Hey, Roger, um, thank you so much for um, taking the opportunity to fill out the application and selecting this great space at 24th Street to Florence Boulevard. Um, because in our community, um, just like the 100 black men say all the time, we are what we see. Yes. And putting that iconic sign up there in the heart of North Omaha is definitely something that is very much needed to our inner city youth. And I just want to thank you and your family uh, for thinking that much to uh, make that recommendation. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate your support, too. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Mr. Harding. Uh, thank you, Roger. I, um, I'm, I'm amazed that something like this hasn't been done prior to this day. I mean, your, your brother was an incredible athlete, an incredible ambassador. I had the fortune of spending a couple of years down at KU where he was known as the Kansas Comet. And um, it, it's nice to hear you say, too, that his heart never left Omaha. But that's so um, that fully supportive of this. And, and again, I, I actually, I, I'm almost apologizing that something like this to recognize him and your family hasn't been done prior to this. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're doing it today. Thank you. Thank you. No I move, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Oh, I move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve. Roll call. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley, Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion Thank passed you. six to zero. Thanks, Roger. Item 58, a resolution to approve the program agreement with the Nebraska Department of Transportation for the Omaha Urban Core Street Reconfiguration Study. Public hearing and vote on number 58 is today. Proponents, please. Hello, Austin Riles, Republic Works Department. Um, what we have before us today is the program agreement for the uh, the study of the downtown street reconfiguration. Reconf this is similar to the, the radio highway discussion that we had where this is a project that was given federal funds through MAPA's process. And this is our, our program agreement with the DOT so that we can begin that consultant selection process, which uh, the timeline on that would be later this year. And we can start looking at uh, those, those streets downtown and looking at areas where we can increase the walkability and increase, increase accessibility in the downtown core. Um, that, that consultant would do their work through 2024 and we expect results by the end of that year. And I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents?
should I say, Mr. Smith goes to Washington, James Stewart, or should I get my name? Uh, Donnie R. Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian <laughs> Foundation, Northam Hawkinson Citizen Foundation. I was going to ask the gentleman, how many African Americans are going to get a job out of this program he was speaking of? That's the question I was bringing to him, not to oppose it, because I support everything Mayor Stafford does. She does a wonderful job. But can you tell us in the future, as we elaborate, trying to get to a point which is a, a permissible under the studies of uh, political science at the University of Nebraska? Right, Donnie, this is about a two way conversion in the study of downtown traffic. Yeah, like but I want to know. To, this is what it, Mr. Steve Rosenbach told me before he left. I have mercy on the City Council of Omaha. Mr. Steve Rosenbach told me that. In the meantime, as a difficult but politician, which I don't want to be, but I can be, can you also in the future tell us how many jobs are we going to get in these programs? We need jobs. J-O-B-S, jobs. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Any other opponents to number 58? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just um, put the light on since um, I had a point of privilege to do so. <laughs> a motion to approve. Thank you. I'll second. Uh, I'll just, uh, um, Austin, if you don't mind coming up for one more second. Um, I'll also just comment that I think this one is significant to, to point out in addition to number 45. I think it is still very consistent with the Vision Zero we're talking about. But this is also significant because it's, it's essentially analyzing the urban core of our city and uh, for walkability and safety for sure. Um, but also, unlike the other study, uh, possible conversion of one-way to two-way streets, which I think has been a game changer in many communities, right? Um, do you want to comment on that or do you see that as a, as a major focus of this going forward when we, when we get the consultant on board? I, I think initially that's the driving focus of the study is to look at those one-way streets that could potentially convert to two-way. Um, that, that helps with speeds. Obviously, we talked about speed being one of the major factors in our Vision Zero program as we talked about this morning. Uh, but looking at areas where we can enhance pedestrian facilities as well and uh, provide for you know greater speed control, greater visibility of pedestrians, and, and more improved access for uh, walkers and cyclists in the downtown area to be able to utilize and, and access businesses and residences and such. Mm -hmm. In cooperation with all the moving parts that are happening downtown as we speak, right? Correct. Yep. Thanks. Mr. Bagley, you're recognized. Thanks, Mr. President. Cover most of the base on this. Austin, thanks for the presentation today on with Vision Zero. And this is a good, important step in the urban core with all the construction and building that we're recognizing traffic safety, pedestrian safety, and all the interconnections of all, all these moving parts. So um, I know it doesn't happen overnight, but this is a great step. And I look forward to, I'm sure we'll have plenty of meetings in the months and next few years ahead on uh, making this better. So I appreciate your work on this. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. President. Thank you. There was a motion and a second. No further lights. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Thank you. Motion passed six to zero. 1059, an ordinance to approve a memorandum of understanding with the Tri-County Planning, Exercise, and Training Region of the Nebraska State Homeland Security Program. Public hearing on number 59 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 60, an ordinance to accept and authorize disbursement from the fiscal year 2022 Community Project Funding Grant Program for the North 24th Street Streetscape Improvements Plan. Public hearing on number 60 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? It's got to be to the streetscape, right, Downey? Number number 60. I'm trying to show you how to be a good politician. Well, let's just stay on topic and you'll be fine. <coughs> Address and phone number and all that stuff? And yes. Okay. Because I started this stuff when I was 24 years old. And didn't think I learned anything. Donnie R. Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation. My, Mr. Fredrickson, my objective is here today to help you out. Can you start elaborating to us how we're going to get some jobs in North Omaha to keep us from robbing Paul to pay Peter? That's what I'm coming here to help you get us on that track. We need to stop robbing Paul to pay Peter. It's getting worse and worse. Thank you. I think that's definitely the idea with this project. Any other opponents today? 
Seeing none, public hearings closed. Item 61, an ordinance to approve an interlocal agreement with the City of Valley to provide prosecutorial services. Public hearing on number 61 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Next is the election of officers. Madam Clerk, I believe you'll issue ballots. Oh, yep, the ballots are at your seats, and we also provided pens. Um, Kimberly will come around and collect them. Okay. And first on the agenda is election of president, right? Correct. All right. A majority has been reached, six votes for Pete Festerson. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Kimberly will now hand out the ballots for Vice President. A majority has been reached, five votes for Amy Melton and one vote for Juanita Johnson. Before we adjourn, uh, we'll just take a brief moment of personal privilege for myself and, and Ms. Melton. Um, I just wanna thank my council members for that vote of confidence and I'm, I'm pleased to serve as your president for the next two years. Um, I also appreciate the message we're sending here today uh, about uh, working together as a group and being nonpartisan to keep moving our city forward. Um, and I also appreciate the work of all council members uh, during this period of time to address uh, items on our agenda or constituent services we know are still needed in South Omaha. Uh, I think that was evident in our work today that uh, council members are engaged and will continue to be engaged uh, going forward. And definitely thank City Council staff in that respect too. I know uh, they are redoubling their efforts in that respect and we'll make sure that those things continue to be done in the following weeks. I also wanna congratulate my Vice President, Amy, um, for congratulations for being Vice President and I'll, I'll let you um, assume the floor now. I'm gonna thank the, I'll keep it short since it's almost, almost five o'clock, but I too wanna echo, I wanna thank all of my colleagues because I think that this process over the last week in the discussions that we've all had does set an example. I think that we're not necessarily seeing in the nation that we can actually have conversations with each other. We can discuss what needs to get done and we can all work together to do it. So um, I think you've earned and deserved another, another term as president and I look forward to working with you. So thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Mr. Harding, point of, point of privilege as well? Sure. Yep. Uh, congratulations, Pete. Congratulations, Amy. Um, I think we're in good hands. And um, I, too, appreciate the conversations that we've had over the past couple weeks, really. Um, 
and I think it's um, it, it's of note too that uh, I don't remember the last time that we had a a female sitting in one of the positions of officers for our council, and I, I think it's a, it's a great message, not only have, that we've sent here today to say that we can work together, but that we're that we don't look at necessarily, you know, sex or, or race or whatever when we're, we're we're picking the best people for the job, and I think we've done that today. Great. Thank you. Mr. Bigley. Thanks, Mr. President. First, congratulations. Councilmember Melton is a dad of three daughters. I know that's an important um, thing as a woman to be the vice president of the council. And I know we don't agree on everything, but you're tenacious and you're, you're, um, you do the, the work. So I, I look forward to the next two years is working with you as vice president and probably on several committees as well. And I see your dad and your sister out there and I know they're proud of you today as well so and council president Fesserson I was glad to support you and appreciate all your help you've given me as a rookie on the council and your steady leadership is really something to be commended and I look forward to the next two years with you and everybody else up here as well thank you thank you no for the lights is there a motion to adjourn Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Meeting is adjourned at 452. Thank you.